June 7th, 2016. We now take you to Germany with a report. Stay with us. There was one Muslim, an uh, Afghan Muslim, and he uh, told me at a rally, yeah, I will cut off your head. Rob Dew reporting for Infowars.com. We are in Munich, Germany. We just landed and we're at the train station here in downtown Munich. Uh, about a 15 minute drive from the airport. And as you can see, it's a hustle and bustle. Lots of people coming around here. Um, and what are we here for mainly? To talk about the migrant crisis that is going on in Europe and how it can spill over to the United States. Last year, there were about 1 million migrants coming into Germany. Uh, where we're at in Bavaria had the second most highest concentration of migrants. And they have them in areas all around here right now there's not a high concentration in the train station and so far this year with the closing of the borders there's only been about 200,000 entering in but now here's my friend Michael Stutzenberger he is with the German Freedom Party and uh, so we're gonna do a little interview I talked with him uh, on email and he agreed to meet with us so uh, tell us about your uh, your German Freedom Party what are you guys all about so um, we are uh, informing the people about uh, Islam mm -hmm. about the danger of Islam and we want to have um, direct democracy. Right. We want that the people vote for um, very important decisions. And uh, yeah, we are very um, aware of, of that uh, refugee problem because uh, you told it was more than one million people coming last year. This year, over 200,000, and this is a big problem for Germany. Yeah. And so, what what kind of strain does that put on your infrastructure in terms of crime, in terms of extra police presence, in terms of of, of them uh, uh, getting basically feeding off the system? Yeah, you know, we have a lot of people from northern Africa, and um, there are many of them who make uh, criminality. Uh, there is rape problem, this uh, stealing, yeah. And um, yeah, people start to feel uh, insecure in their own country. Women fear, yeah. Um, little girls fear when they go to school. Um, many of the uh, refugees are Muslims. They are coming from a totally different culture where women are on a lower level and raping is something normal for them. So it's a very difficult situation. Huh? And how many would you estimate are men, say, 18 to 50 that are coming in to, the, to your countries? So there are a lot of young men coming. They are between uh, 18 and 25, most of them, most of them Muslims. Not so many women, not so many uh, children. And um, most of them yeah, have no right for asylum. They are... Um, um, refugees into our social system. They want to have a better life. And um, our politicians uh, say, oh, all welcome. Yeah, They want to be good Germans, you know, right. welcome to everybody. Um, and it's uh, not so good. So you were, I was reading on the internet about a, a project you were working on. Basically, Saudi Arabia wanted to fund one of the largest mosques here in Munich. And, and tell us about your efforts to fight that. So we collected signatures for three years. We had 65,000 people who uh, subscribed, but um, the city of Munich, the politicians, don't want that referendum, so they put us to, to court to, to uh, fight against that referendum, so we have to fight for the right of the people to decide. Uh, it's so crazy. Now we, we had to start a, a new referendum, and uh, we, we want definitely to stop this project, because um, Somebody from Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia financing this huge mosque would be a big problem because Saudi Arabia is putting millions and millions of dollars uh, in um, building mosques all over Europe, in, in Bosnia and, and, and Germany and everywhere. They want to Islamize Europe and they are financing terror. They are financing Al Qaeda. They are financing Islamic State. So. It's so crazy what's going on there. We have to stop it. But the politicians close their eyes because the money from the Arabic world is very important for Munich. They are coming rich Arabians yeah, here in the hospitals and they, uh, they are buying here in the luxury shops millions of um, euros for the city. So they let all them in. Huh?
reporters are in Germany. Rob Du, Josh Owens, they're going to be joining us coming up today at 12.30 Central Standard Time. Now, that's over in Europe. Out on the West Coast, Leanne McAdoo, Joe Biggs, and others will be joining us from California. And, of course, they've got those big primaries taking place today. And they're saying that Hillary Clinton has, has cinched the nomination, even though she's stolen delegates from Bernie Sanders. He is not capitulating, says he's going to fight. Uh, but the mainstream media is saying that she is now the presumptive nominee and that Donald Trump has it 100%. I don't think it's over until the fat lady sings or until the war criminal sings because anything is possible uh, with, with the technocrats that are in control of our nation right now. But we're going to be talking to Leanne McAdoo, Joe Biggs, uh, and others coming up on the West Coast. And, of course, Rob Dew and others with live video feeds as well from Germany. This is mainly a radio show. It started out 21 years ago as a radio show. But I'd also been doing television for 21 years. And so in about the last 16, 17 years, I merged the two. Uh, and this is what we call InfoWars Live with yours truly, Alex Jones. If you're just driving along in your car and hear us talking about video feeds and things like that, you can always go to InfoWars.com forward slash show or just go to InfoWars.com and click on the show tab, uh, radio show tab. And it actually has all of the uh, video feeds as well. In fact, that ought to be radio slash TV tab uh, because that that confuses some folks but that's up there on infowars.com and it's a great link obviously to send out to everyone you know on a routine basis because they are trying to shut down free speech and destroy nationalism the family and in, in any form of possible uh, resistance to the technocracy let me do my best here and just go over some of these headlines uh, dr bill warner of political islam Dot com will be joining us. He's been highly requested by listeners the last few years. I finally uh, sat down and read one of his books a few months ago and uh, watched some of his videos. He's well-spoken. He gives you a good historical breakdown, but I've read so many mainline history books. What he's saying is just admitted fact if you're informed. So he, he kind of goes slowly through it all. This will be his first visit with us for 30 minutes or so. I'm going to say, listen, you, you know, you're an expert on this, but I've already researched what you're saying before I knew you. I know what you're saying is just mainline historical fact. Give us the boil down and then the timeline of where this is going. So we're not going to have two, three hours to go over this with him, but uh, you know, he is a popular speaker that breaks all of this down. So he will be will be joining us. But, but I have to remember that even with informed groups out there, when you really learn about the history of Islam, from its own writings and what the goal is, it's shocking that Western governments would be trying to bring in unsustainable groups of people from the most radical areas and then having everyone bow to their will. It really shows you how inherently wicked and anti-freedom based uh, the Western controllers are. But again, after they've brought in radical Islam and funded radical Islam to take over much of uh, the uh, area is already controlled by Muslims. Once that radicalization process is accelerated into La La Land, there will be a clash of civilizations that will be expanded between the West per the PNAC plan. This is official plan by the globalist. Uh, and most of those countries will be basically turned into glass parking lots. So everyone's being set up right now, being played off against each other. I'm not against Muslims. I'm not against Arabs. I'm not against Indonesians. I'm not against Mongolian Muslims, but here's the deal. If you come here, we're not going to conform to your religious beliefs and ideas. We're not going to lose our freedoms of the Renaissance, hard fought, the Enlightenment, because you want us to bow to your will. And that goes the same for pedophile-run Hollywood that wants to teach five-year-olds how to have anal sex in the public schools and that wants to arrest uh, California schoolgirls that talk about the Bible at lunch. SWAT teams are being deployed. I have the articles. So you've got the sick, weird left in such a fetish to butcher the West that they'll ally with one of the most caveman, oppressive, monotheistic, chauvinistic, crazy town systems 
because it just creates such a melee and they want to blow it all up. They want to bring it down because they can't compete with free market, even though we're a limited free market, a crony capitalist system. What's left of it is so powerful. It has an engine of choice in what you buy and what you sell and what you produce that they fear its revolutionary power and want to fully extinct it. That's why for a normal person, you say, this doesn't make any sense. This is the, 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 they're promoting people being lazy. They're promoting people being stupid. They are promoting every form of racism and classism and sexism while at the same time saying that they're trying to stop it. And it's because they are social engineers that exempt themselves from the very programs they put us under. Now, it was last Friday that I finally started paying attention. Because a lot of times, I'm ahead of the curve on big news items. But sometimes, when I see a whole bunch of different attacks being beta tested against gun groups or Christian groups or veterans groups or nationalist organizations or medical freedom groups, whatever the case may be, anytime I'm seeing an attack on that, there's so many of them, I'll kind of watch it grow before I comment. And for a week, I'd been hearing about Trump University and how it's the most evil thing on the planet and it's so horrible. And I've been hearing about that for months, but it accelerated. And then Trump came out and said, this judge is being very political. He works with very political groups that are, that are basically pro-Mexico. And so he is loyal to Mexico. But Trump just said, he's a Mexican, he's not for America. And allowed them to spin it that he was saying because he's a Mexican, he can't be a judge. And that's not what Trump was really saying. And in fact, in a larger clip, he, he clarified it in his statement. But again, they know that they're dealing with a population in this country, especially on the West Coast, I don't care what color they are, that cannot find their butts with both hands. Uh, you've seen the our videos, you've seen the other reporter videos, you've seen Mark Dice. I mean, these are unedited. We're showing you everyone we're talking to. And I don't care whether they're an old white man or a young black man or a young Hispanic woman. These people do not know what planet they're on. And then all they hear is, yeah, Trump said this judge can't rule because he's a Mexican. No, Trump said, no, he's you know, fine. He's, he's loyal to the Mexicans and not to this country. People said he's a federal judge. What do you mean? Well, most federal judges, in my view, aren't loyal to this country. Look at their rulings throwing out the Bill of Rights and Constitution. So Trump's good at dumbing things down, but sometimes he dumbs it down too much and the nuances get lost. But listen, the Daily Caller first reported on this. World Net Daily has dug into it. So have we. And there's 13,000 know, different articles out there. I saw on this today when I did a Google search. 1,300 of them, strangely enough, have comments from yours truly in there. So at least we're counter-striking now with the facts. And here's the headline. Judge, law firm bringing Trump U case. So both the judge and the law firm bringing the Trump University case, both tied to La Raza. And I love the spin in a bunch of different newspapers. They go, well, he's on a judicial La Raza board that gets scholarships for illegal aliens. Or undocumented. Let me use the proper word since the government told me to. And he is involved in the same group that Sotomayor is. And actually have a New York Times quote here where Sotomayor in 1999, they were talking about her being a potential Supreme Court justice if Obama got elected. And well, I've got the article, it's 2000 something. And she actually says in the article, well, I'm a Hispanic woman with particular wisdom, and so I'll be able to rule better on cases because I'm not a white man. Now, imagine if, 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 if a white judge talks like that. It's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And here's what I'm getting at. If you're any other shade other than white, eggshell, then you are allowed to engage in classical racial organizations. You're allowed to have BET. Can you imagine white entertainment television? And, and I get it. Blacks have been downtrodden, had problems, and foisted out to the edge of society and all the rest of it. So, 
you know, let folks have their own channel. I actually get that culturally. But there's been this extreme now where whites can't have any culture of any type. I've even seen articles saying our Oktoberfest racist. I mean, they have those articles every year. Should we get rid of Oktoberfest because it's too white? You go to an Oktoberfest, there's people of every color out there having a great time. Eating sausages and drinking beer and eating pretzels. But, but that's what it's come down to where if you're white or you're Christian, because that's where this is really going after is Western civilization and the real Christian ethic. Not the megachurch ethic, but the real Christian ethic. Where I see articles every day where you will have a Christian with a Bible at a college or at a public school or giving out Christmas cards. That happens every year all over the country. And they get called in and they get suspended or expelled or the police come because they talked about Bible verses. Kellen McBrain wrote an article about this. School calls sheriff on seven-year-old for sharing Bible verses. California elementary school sent deputies to boys' home for distributing Christian materials. Well, you should be allowed to hand out birthday cards or, or Valentine's cards or, or, or cards. I mean, they teach Islam in the schools for, quote, diversity. But see, Christianity is prasada non grada. Remember the Pope said three weeks ago in La Croix newspaper, he goes, I just abhor, I just can't stand hearing about Christian roots of Europe. We need to stop this. This is xenophobic. This is uh, colonialism. I mean, see, it is an attack on the West, period. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live. I'm your host, Alex Jones. The news websites are Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Bottom line, I want prosperity. I want wealth. I want freedom of choice. I want the family and the human institution honored and protected. And I want to see our environment, the genetic registry of this planet, protected. I don't want to see thousands of major corporations genetically splicing every species under the sun in mass, creating huge mutations across the genetic spectrum from plankton to whales, from humans down to fire ants. We are all being manipulated and changed and the globalists are acting like the island of Dr. Moreau on PCP. And I tune in to television, and it is the most weaponized garbage, including Fox News. Remember the whole lacrosse team thing years ago that went on for three years where the white lacrosse team raped the black stripper? It was all made up. It was all lies. But it was sold to create racial division and also create the illusion that all sex is rape, the hardcore third wave feminist view. And they've got all these movies out, you know, like The Neighbors 2, where, oh, the next to the frat house. And the whole thing is about how men wanting to have sex with women is rape, period. And men are inherently bad. I mean, it's all just weaponized to turn everybody into gibbering idiots. And I'll be talking about that coming up in the next segment. Uh, you know, this Stanford swimmer champion only got six months because at a, at a party, they caught him with a girl that was drunk and looked like she was passed out. This guy looks like an entitled creep to me, quite frankly. Because there's nothing worse than these guys that haven't done anything with their lives that go around thinking they're, you know, elitist and all the rest of it. And he, he kind of fits that bill. And I don't like frat parties. And I don't like the whole thing. But I'll tell you something right now. Statistically, they release thousands of illegal aliens every year for hardcore rape and don't even charge them. Or they're convicted and they just release them. That's okay. But see, it's not a big cause celeb every time an illegal alien, whether they be Chinese or Mexican or Eastern European or whatever. But boy, let me tell you, when there's some swim team champ and the two white knights catch him, I'm going to cover this more later, all the details, you know, catch him with a drunk woman and they tackle him and call the police. And then the judge and the police and the probation officer and everybody, because this guy had no criminal record previous, but the officer already signed in case he goes on probation, says, you know what, uh, you need to really just give this guy time served or six months. And I'll just tell you, there is rape that goes on on campus. There are people that get roofied. It, it, it is a problem. But 
I personally, in high school and going to college parties, I don't like it back when I was more promiscuous. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm just being honest. I, I ran to this thing where women would call you into a room and then lay down and act like they were passed out. So I guess somehow they didn't have to feel guilty that they were having sex. And I just was like, hey, I'm not having sex with a sack of potatoes. Get up. And they go, okay. Oh, and then, I mean, and I was like, just forget it. You're a screwball. I ran into that. I don't want to exaggerate. Mm. I was promiscuous. I'm not proud of it, but uh, didn't have any problem with the ladies. I don't know. I don't even want to tell. I, 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 I ran into this. Women playing possum probably 30, 40 times. And I learned it was just something that, that they did. So it was like a denial that they'd done something bad. Some type of weird. Uh, the, the new thing is women say, and I don't want to get graphic if kids are listening to it. But this is scientific fact. This is in the news. Young women will tell people, oh, I just have anal sex. I'm waiting for marriage for the other as birth control. And the big joke is that's what Catholic girls do. And then uh, the other thing is uh, oral sex. There are, I mean, th there's news articles about this, and the CDC is concerned about it as well, where a young, say, 16-, 17-year-old girl has given oral sex to maybe 50, 100 boys, young men at the school, but it's okay because it's oral. So, uh, again, it, it's one of those games. And then there's all this feminist thing, hate the men, all sex is rape. You know, if you don't give them a contract, you know, they can't have sex with you. Or, or if you wake up because you were drunk and, and, and now didn't want to do it, say it's rape. I mean, the courts know there is a jihad against men. Even the courts know, the police know, that about half the rape case claims they get are fake. We're on the march. The empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. We're here with Roger Stone in studio. Again, a Trump insider, former head of his campaign. And he's taken on the incredibly dangerous task of stopping the silence. We're talking about stopping the silence of the fact that Bill Clinton is a serial predator against women. And as a man, as a father of two daughters, nothing makes me more angry than men that prey on women. My Biggest fault is putting women like a little kitty up on a pink pillow and spoiling them. Uh, it just goes against my grain. And you look at the history of this, it's sickening, it's documented. He has settled cases where women reported rape. What does that tell you? And they've got the nerve to then attack Donald Trump and act like he's against women because he dated women when he wasn't uh, married. Roger Stone, his longtime confidant and friend, is, is, is here to break this down. Uh, Stop the Silence is a major program you're launching. In the few minutes we have here, Roger, tell us about this initiative and how people that want to stop and counter real rape, how do they get involved? Alex, I think you just hit it on the head. Bill Clinton is a Bill Cosby-type sexual predator. In fact, if Jesse Jackson were here right now, he would say the, 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 the white man campaigns, but the black man is arraigned. So we have set up uh, a petition at ipetition.com called Stop the Silence that demands that Bill and Hillary Clinton hold a town meeting, an open town meeting, and address these questions. That's Take right. Address them. Respond. Stop the silence. If it isn't true, respond. So all we are asking here, and it's simple, which is go online, sign the petition. We want hundreds of thousands of people to demand the truth from Bill and Hillary. And by Clinton. the way, let's go further. You've been banned on CNN, MSNBC, and let's just say it, you've been told on other networks, don't bring this up. You've been told all over, don't bring this up. They are scared to death of this. You've written the book on it, uh, The Clinton's War on Women. They're trying to suppress this, folks, because it is high noon to vampires. This is the single most potent issue regarding Hillary, because it undermines her phony claim that she's an advocate for women. She is an abuser of women. So, folks, go to the petition, sign up, help us bring the Clintons to justice and help us defeat the mainstream media effort to suppress this issue. The Clintons always have the exact same tactic. Attack the women. It's time for us to stop the silence. And while claiming they support women, now now again, there's an iPetition. What's the website? One more time. You go to iPetition.com and sign up to help us stop the silence. We, we particularly, of course, want 
the signatures of women and girls. So please. Stop the silence there at iPetition. We'll put the URL here on screen. Thank you, Roger Stone, for standing up for women. Many thanks. Appreciate that. We've got Josh Owens, Paul Watson's landing as we speak. He's got to drive out and meet him outside Dresden. There's no direct flights into Dresden. And we've got our three reporters there on the ground. They're going to be joining us coming up in the next hour. We also have Leanne McAdoo and Joe Biggs out in California for the big final primaries today. We've got that whole battle going on. There is just so much to cover here. But I've got an amazing New York Times article here from 2009. A judge's view of judging is on the record is the New York Times article. And she said, I would hope that as a wise Latin woman with the richness of her experiences would more often than not reach a better conclusion than a white male who hasn't lived that life, said Schuttemeyer, who is now considered to be near the top of President Obama's list of potential Supreme Court nominees. Hey, I think it'd be great to have a Hispanic woman on the Supreme Court. But let me tell you something about Sotomayor and Kagan. These penguin-like women are anti-gun, anti-republic, anti-free market, globalist slimes. And I am sick and tired of the media and the system and the culture. Look, growing up in Dallas, Texas, I experienced territorial gang-like activity from white people and from black people about equally, and it was bad. Any excuse to fight uh, each other. Blacks wanted to fight blacks, blacks wanted to fight whites, vice versa. Rednecks would just pull up. If they didn't know, you start a fight with you. It was horrible. Most cities aren't like that. I had no idea until I moved to Austin that most places weren't completely insane. And it was super male, super macho. Hey, I kind of like the whole liberal side of let's not beat each other's brains out. And I'll say it, I didn't run into a lot of trouble with Mexicans and racial stuff. Though well, five of them were there, four of them broke my leg once. <laughs> so I've only, only, only had Mexicans attack me because of racially pretty much, you know, once. It was not like the rednecks because they didn't know me or the blacks you know, constantly. Uh, but uh, I was talking to a guy last night from Houston. He was Hispanic and white, which is kind of an oxymoron. Hispanics are Native American and white. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, but he gets the name from Hispaniola, which is Dominican Republic to the east and Haiti to the west. But again, the public doesn't have any of this information. It's just crazy. I could argue I'm Hispanic because I'm 13% Native American. It's just ridiculous. All it means is I can get a better tan. I don't care. I'm proud of my heritage. It's just such mental illness that I can't handle it anymore. And the way they push race-based garbage... And the way they're doing it with Hispanic groups in the media and the universities is, is a travesty. And it's because they've already handicapped Latin America with communism as the supposed way to get out of crony capitalism. Well, Latin America is probably, on average, about 90%. Look it up yourself, less wealthy than it was 60 years ago, thanks to getting into socialism and communism. How's it working out for you down in Venezuela right now? The New World Order doesn't want Latin Americans who are smart, super hardworking, and family-based to ever get their own economic system going because it will be independent, it will be vibrant, it will be amazing, and it will be explosive. So instead, that's why you've got all the free tuition for Latin Americans to come here and become the new ruling class of communists that are funded by big mega banks. And that's all it is. And that's what this judge in the Trump case is. And it's been documented and proven. That a La Raza law firm and, a, and, and the La Raza group and this judge all there are hardcore Mexican nationalist La Reconquista pushers, but that's only on the surface. The Ford Foundation cooked this thing up in the 50s. It's liberation theology out of the Central Intelligence Agency. It's all declassified. This is not my opinion. This guy works for the New World Order. And he's propped in there to stop some orange-haired nationalist popping up, pointing out that this guy's pro-Mexican. He doesn't mean Mexicans that are in the U.S. That's like saying, you know, no, it'd be like if this guy worked for Germany but was a federal judge. And he said, this guy's a German. 
And he's ruling against me because I'm against Merkel. But see, that dog wouldn't hunt because it's white guys against white guys. But because they can say, oh, it's this Spanish, Hispanic guy. Uh, now it's all this racism. Because the media knows that the general public doesn't understand La Raza and Mecha and all this stuff, which goes out there and says we're going to empower the people. We're going to build everybody up. Here, here's how you do it. Working with the system, working with the government, getting into the government. Uh, you know, you know, don't go out and build your own business. Don't go out and build your own system. Don't, no, no, no. Just stay right here with us, and we're going to take care of you. We're going to take real good care of you. Viva La Raza. Whites were on that plantation to a certain extent until the Republicans and others in the South went against that in the 50s and 60s. So the Democrats had to flip from racial politics on one end to the other. But look, I, I got to get to other news. I got to get to Bilderberg. But it's all interconnected. But let me just run through these headlines. Judge, law firm, so the judge and the law firm bringing Trump UKs both tied to La Raza. Well, they're not tied to it. They're like senior people over it. Here's another one, New York Times. Again, I mentioned it was Sotomayor and her racist statements. Let's get, or just arrogant statements. Now, let's look at all these other headlines that tie together with this. ISIS publicly burns alive 19 Kurdish women for rejecting sex slavery report. Man, I wish we could hear about the 600 million women under dominant radical Islam worldwide who can't drive cars and who can't go outside without a male attendant and have to wear full hoods over their heads. Boy, I wish I was hearing about that in our mainstream media. What I've heard from the Russian news, RT, they videotaped it. They were punished for refusing to have sex with ISIS militants. And that's Muslim women. This is how these dogs, these pigs behave, these, these, these pig turds. I'm sorry, this is what ISIS is, the excrement of a pig. Now, I'm not going to be hearing about that in our media. I'm going to hear about dad, judge under fire after ex-Stanford swimmer sentenced for sex assault. Do you know what the average sentence, you can look this up per state, it varies for a, this type of assault where it's not aggravated, where they weren't tied up, they weren't beaten up. It's probation, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you can say, let's up these sentences. But the but he was recommended a normal six-month sentence, but because he's some trendy white guy who does look like a psycho in the photos, maybe he's not, and and, and he's in the, it's a frat party while they two guys caught him on top of a girl who was almost passed out, okay, whatever. Maybe he did rape her. The point is... What are parents doing paying to send their daughters to these colleges to then send them into these arrested development frat houses where 22-year-old guys rule over a bunch of dumb guys and then women come in and everybody acts like morons? Man, I tell you, that's one reason I got out of college. I started going to some of these frat parties and stuff. I was like, this is horrible. It's like high school part two. I'm out of here. I'm going to go date a hot 30-year-old. See you later. No. Sorry, 22-year-old women were like, when I was 20, were like, too young. I'm always looking going for the full deal. What's the, what's the absolute, I, I guess because I'm 42, the most beautiful woman I've seen, but it's about 35 to 40. I want the full deal. I want the overwhelming woman. But I get little arrested development guys and the girls don't want to get in trouble in case something happens, so they drink and then lay there and then, where you go and come back? You know, oh, I'm, I'm drunk and have sex with me. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just total bull. And this may have happened in this case, but the judge and even the police said, no, he needs to have suspended sentence or six months. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of illegals, it depends on the year, sometimes it's 50-something thousand, are released for rape, robbery, uh, aggravated assault, uh, arson. I mean, you see it in the news. And so my issue is, listen, burn this guy. I tell you what. Give him 50 years in prison, okay, and release all the nonviolent people, okay? Okay, 50 years. Let's give it to him. But let's give the illegals 50 years. And it's not that I hate the illegals. It's that I hate the fact that nobody knows who they are. They're just running around from China and Mexico and everywhere else, and they're just completely left alone to do whatever they want. But if you go along with the system and you pay your taxes as a American of any race, color, or creed, I don't like to hyphenate, but let's say Mexican-American, Anglo-American, African-American. If you go along with everything, they throw the frickin' book at you. And then this guy gets a standard sentence, and they're on Fox News 
acting like it's the end of the world. They're going, oh my gosh, it's so horrible. Why did this recall the judge? Oh, it's so horrible. I mean, you know how many illegal aliens get let go two, three, four times until they kill somebody in a drunk driving accident? I see those articles every week. Texas, Tennessee, California. And you know what? It's usually a minivan full of six or seven Americans who happen to be Hispanic getting killed by another drunk illegal alien. And, and that's another thing. I get it's the culture down in Mexico to drive drunk. Used to be our culture here. If we're going to really crack down on it, you got to crack down on everybody. You can't let illegals go for drunk driving, but then throw the book at a guy who's got the last name Sanchez because his family's been here for 150 years. And he's an American. Or Jones or Johnson. I mean, it is just, it's like, oh, they didn't mean it. So it's, I mean, you know how I have been rear-ended by illegals three times. Most of the car wrecks I've had since I got out of high school, I was not a very good driver then. I had some bad wrecks. I had some wrecks then and hardly any after then. It's what, a tornado blew me off the road once and illegals ran into me three times at stoplights. Once in a parking lot, twice at stoplights. I was pulling into an academy. And the guys are just drunk, and they get out, and you can tell them from Mexico, they don't speak a lick of English, cowboy hats on, dirt all over them, they tell them they've been working all day, they got Mexican plates on the car, and oh, sorry, oh, oh, drunk, here come the cops, and the cops just go, okay, you didn't really have insurance, you got insurance, right, Alex? Oh, and, oh yeah, in two of the cases, cops knew who I was, I was like, yeah, I got it, okay, I get it, you can't, yeah, if we take him in, I'm calling his wife right now, he's... He's calling his wife on his cell phone. How many times I played tapes here from Florida and you name it and Georgia just a few months ago where the illegals are falling down drunk and have hit somebody and the cops let them go. No, my wife's not answering. Oh. It's like, oh. The cops are like, okay, go ahead now. I, I mean, do you want that out on the road with your kids? I mean, I'm asking serious questions here because they want to merge us with Latin America in the North American Union. They want to get rid of borders. It's a U.N. project. The U.N. opened the borders, blew up the Middle East, advertised you could come through Turkey out of Syria, and they came in, and they're there, and they advertise, come here. CNN advertises to Chinese, come here, have your babies for free. There's now more Chinese coming in a week than Mexicans. And they're not coming here to build the railroad. They're not coming here to be a doctor and work on my eyes. I love it. Love Chinese people. Love them, love them so much, we went out and adopted an Asian person. I don't have to throw that out there as a race card, but it's true. I'm sick of all you racists telling me and the West and the Renaissance that changed the whole world, that we're the bad ones. We're not. Nobody's bad. Inherently. But we're being fed all this garbage, and I'm through with it. I can't take it anymore. So continuing. The judge and the law firm bringing Trump UK case, both tied to Raza, they, they're high level. They give, they give, this judge runs a thing to give illegals totally paid for $200 plus thousand dollar college. And I'm not against people. I buy coffee out of Mexico. I hire people that are here legally from Mexico because they're smart and work hard. But I'm not going to sit there and just do everything for free. I don't get all this stuff for free, and I'm fed up because it's part of a larger plan to bring the country down. But I know Suta Mayor tells me that she's a Latin woman, so she can have a more of a mind than me. Really, I thought there might be some Latin women that are smarter than me, and there might be some old white guy smarter than you. It varies, doesn't it? Individual to individual. Oh, no, because you're Latin, you're smarter than me. I understand. Make America Mexico again? How about make America a free, diverse, powerful nation? ISIS publicly burns alive 19 Kurdish women. You won't be hearing about that on Fox News. Africa sees a surge of attacks on albinos who are taken by crowds and eaten, but I'm sure that's white people's fault. Obama sees global... Commitments for 1 million more refugees in schools and 1 million more legally working. Yes. Video. Protesters with We Need Socialism signs viciously attack pro-Trump Hispanics. Oh, yeah. They're really trying to intimidate. Uh, this is racketeering Hispanics that are out there going to the uh, Trump rallies. And, and by the way, 
Then we're going to Dr. Grip here in a moment. I'm going to skip this break. By the way, Trump does this baby talk thing he does where he goes, I have one here. I have the head of the veterans group or I have one here. I have one of the delegates here. They were told, to, you know, and he goes, I have one here, an African-American. And they go, look at that. He said he had one here, like he had one in the basement. No, that's how Trump talks. They take everything. Oh, secret racism. Oh, what are you going to do? Get them some fried chicken? This is the type of stuff they push constantly. And then Trump's like sitting there grabbing Hispanic women. Going, I love the woman. Oh, I love the Hispanic people. You know, and, and, and other people that know Trump, that's what he's like behind the scenes. Like two or three steaks, piles of potatoes, running around hugging everybody, just completely out of control, 18 hours a day. He's probably got some chromosomal issue or something, you know, like a Superman or something, a super orange pumpkin man. But And he makes fun of himself, by the way, behind the scenes. But all of this turns into he's a racist, no? He gets the intel. This judge is a La Raza, La Reconquista, Mexican nationalist, you know, guy. And he goes, the guy's a Mexican. He doesn't want a border. He's, 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 he's loyal to Mexico. Okay, I honor him. He's proud of, his, of, of that country. This is America, and this guy shouldn't be able to rule. Obviously, he should recuse himself, but the media spins that all up. Here's another one. Half a million veterans waiting over 30 days for VA care. But that's okay, New surge in Central American seen on border. Biggest ever, PBS. Am I against these poor people? No. They're, they're being used as a weapon to come in and break the country and create a Tower of Babel. DHS quietly moving, releasing van loads of illegal aliens away from border. Told you that years ago. Now it's confirmed Judicial Watch. Oh, I love this one. I just mentioned it. Illegals openly brag about 30,000 case scholarships on Twitter that they're getting from the government and from the states and Again, they brag 4.5 GPA, full tuition paid at UT, 13 cords, medals, nice legs, oh, and I'm undocumented. It's supposed to say, hey, I'm contributing, I'm great, I'm a valedictorian, I'm all this stuff. Okay, well, then we should speed up a way to make this person a citizen. Absolutely. You got grades like that and everything else? We should just have a law. Just like you go fight in the military, boom, you're a citizen. Ranked ninth, and it goes on right here. I'm also undocumented. So it's the thing about saying undocumented are valuable. I get all that. But see, the citizens aren't getting stuff like this in many cases. And this is being done to incentivize. And then you're put through the Chicano programs at the schools, which is basically the equivalent of you're a victim. Everybody's out to hate you. Only the socialists love you. Only Gloria Steinem loves you. All sex is rape. Your, your men are bad. The patriarchy's bad. The family's bad. You know, basically, here, take a Gardasil shot. We love you. Oh, sorry, you can't have kids now. But we love you because, you know, we got black eagles up with communist red flags. All created by the CIA on record. This one, battle rages as GOP saves Obama plot to diversify neighborhoods. They, the, 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 with their new computers, they know areas that have low welfare, areas that have high uh, employment, areas that are doing well, they're going to create little government nest in that and then bring in people to break down the society and the culture and not let anyone escape the poverty, anyone escape the collapsing uh, tax base. And then meanwhile, I mentioned this earlier, here's the story up on Infowars.com. School calls sheriff on seven-year-old for sharing Bible verses. I see this all the time. California Elementary School sent deputy to boys' home for distributing Christian materials. The Desert Rose Elementary School in Palmdale, California, Severely abused a first grader's constitutional rights, according to a press release put out by the Liberty Council. The boy's mother, Christina Zalvala, as I pronounced that right. Oh, look, a Hispanic person, I think, being abused. Oh, for their Christianity seek, they hate everybody's guts, folks. Put a Bible verse on a sticky note in her son's packed lunch every day, along with a short story to provide context for the verses. My mother used to do that for me. Christina's son, known as C, began sharing notes with other children during lunch. He communicated with free speech his mother's words and talked about Christ. See, you have free speech, folks. Now they say separation of church and state means you have no religion. <laughs> but that all came to an end when the young girl showed one note to her teacher saying it was the most beautiful story she'd ever seen, at which point the teacher told C he could no longer share notes at lunch. But when he did do it, they sent the police to his house and they're, you know, they're looking at criminal charges and everything else. I'm not going to go over the whole article, but this is, this is what goes on. See, we're all losing our basic rights. 
Doesn't matter what color you are, the NSA spying on you, what color you are, they're putting fluoride in your water, what color you are, they're geoengineering, what color you are, we're all going under world government. What color you are, you're, you're glued to the TV screen, the, the, the iPhone, your IQ's dropping, your brain's not being wired correctly, the vaccines are attacking everybody. We're all under attack. We're all under globalist rule. We're all going into this thing. They're not bringing Muslims in, five million of them in the last four years into Europe, because they want to have everybody love the Muslims. It's meant to totally demonize them and set up a giant war between the West and Islam. It'll destroy both, by the way, which is what Albert Pike wrote 140 years ago. Wow, that guy was evil. So I'm going to cover all of this. There is so much to get to, obviously, but that's just some of what I wanted to get to there. We've got some big announcements coming up in the next hour. We've got our reporters joining us from Germany and California. This is what we built with the info war. We have got the newspapers imploding even faster. A Ebola case reportedly in Hollywood, L.A. Times. Folks, we got all sorts of Ebola on a routine basis. They just cover it up. That's been confirmed, but it's just back of the paper. Uh, just like TB spreading everywhere. They don't even test folks for TB now. 20-something uh, percent of the refugees have TB associated press. No one seems to care. TB spreading everywhere. TB that'll kill you. Doesn't matter what color your baby is now, does it? Oh, just be nice. Let the people in from Latin America and let the people in where it's even worse from the Middle East with flesh-eating bacteria mites. Mites that carry a bacteria that then eats your flesh that hundreds of thousands died in the last year in the Middle East from it. It's okay. We get to, uh, black plagues now showing up. Uh, oh, wet leprosy is now showing up at record levels. Never before seen in the last hundred years. But it's okay. Because a blonde haired, blue eyed guy might have raped a woman and only got six months. In fact, I say execute him, but execute all the other rapists, even if they're illegal. Oh, you won't do that, will you? You see, I'm not defending this guy. Who knows what he really did? The point is, the judge and the police didn't buy the story that the jury did. Who knows? All I know is they've seen a lot more. I'm not defending every judge out there, but I'm just telling you, there, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Hillary begs Bernie to drop out as she clinches the nomination, the media says. She stole most of the delegates. He's the real guy. He's fighting it, even though I hate him. We've got Bilderberg's agenda. It's on DrudgeReport.com. It's on Infowars.com. We got it. They put it out on their official website. We wrote a story around it. That's coming up. And it is your purchase of the products that makes it all possible. Now, joining us is Dr. Edward Group, one of the top nutraceutical producers in the country who has so many patents it makes my head spin and who produces the line of products from InfoWarsLife.com. We have a limited run of 1,000 of these. I want to know your reviews. I want you to get them. We have a few minutes here and five minutes in the next segment to talk about it. This is so important because it's ozonated, pure olive oil, organic skin moisturizer that, that, that we've been using for six months behind the scenes. It's been years in the making. Leanne McAdoo has been so blown away by it. The problem is, is that group blew up a facility making it once because it's so hard to contain the ozone in a true gas form. It's safe once it's in the bottle with the olive oil. So it actually oxygenates and is basically living. And if I'm, if I'm saying this correct, uh, Dr. Group, instead of just being dead uh, oil on your body, it actually bioactivates. Is that a fair way of saying it, Dr. Group? Yeah, it is. Uh, I did actually almost blow up the facility. It all started with, we talk about all the internal toxins all the time coming into the body, but I was also looking for, you know, the different types of toxins that affect the skin and what is the ultimate skincare product. And that led me back to Nikolai Tesla's research. And he actually created an ozonated olive oil by bubbling ozone through it for a long period of time. Sometimes it takes up to six months to get the olive, olive oil to change into a paste. So it's not necessarily a liquid olive oil that's been ozonated. This is a chemical process that takes place over a long period of time. Now, you're not putting gimmicks out. That's why your iodine you produce for us, your super male, all of it are such game changers, even with the nutraceutical and uh, supplement Nazis out there on the big third party sites. They absolutely love our products. Yeah, this is what you would consider as the ultimate luxury skincare product. I mean, it releases oxygen onto the skin. We've been testing this for close to 15 years. Some of the most exclusive luxury spas around the world use this for oxygen facials and charge $250 per facial. It's 100% organic. It's been known to stimulate uh, and grow skin cells. 
It protects the skin from toxic uh, products. Uh, you know, look at most skincare products out there, including sunscreen, Alex, cause severe damage to the skin. So I was Dr. Group, stay there because I went to you late. I got so wound up. I want you to come back and take your time talking about this because that's the key. Similar formulas that aren't even as good as yours out there. I happen to know because I've, 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 I've seen it are a hundred two hundred dollars because it's like a hundred bucks just for the treatment than a hundred bucks for the person to do the treatment the esthetician so we're talking about twenty nine dollars it should be forty but we're discounting it out of the gate uh, as an introductory offer twenty nine dollars ozonated olive oil infowarslife.com all right for this short segment we're talking to dr edward group about an amazing new development in health and then when we start the next segment we have this as an exclusive just so you know and it's a big deal. Uh, you notice that uh, Newt Gingrich has been out attack, attacking Donald Trump a lot lately, claiming he was his big buddy all along. And I said, don't trust Newt Gingrich. Well, report Trump refused $200 million to pick Gingrich as VP. That's on Infowars.com. We're going to be talking about that coming up in the next segment. Then we'll talk to our reporters out on the West Coast for this big primary day, 2016. And then we'll go to Germany with our reporters on the ground there. They've been inside the Bilderberg Hotel. Um, I'm told they're trying to throw them out basically right now. Uh, they have the German military there putting up fences. But we only got a little bit of time. Dr. Group, thank you for your time. Start over with how you develop this, why it's so important, and why it's such a game changer of ozonated olive oil, uh, skin moisturizing uh, conditioner. Why this 1.7 fluid ounce uh, paste is, is, is so important. Well, because I was looking for the most effective, non-toxic, organic skincare product that would actually stimulate and renew the epidermis, which is the epidermal cells on your skin. So many people put so many toxins on their skin and our skin is exposed to toxins in the air every day too. Our skin loves oxygen, but we're not getting oxygen on our skin because the oxygen content is decreasing in the atmosphere all over the world. So I was looking for to develop the most ultimate luxury skincare product that's out there. And it was based on Nikolai Tesla's research back in the early days where he started ozonating olive oil and it would turn into a white thick paste. But it's very dangerous to do because ozone generates a lot of heat and the equipment necessary for that is extremely expensive. And we spent close to $250,000 just on some of the equipment alone. And it takes a long time. You have to bubble ozone at certain temperatures through a period of time, it can take three to six months, depending on what type of olive oil you're using and also depending on the atmospheric pressure currently in that time period. So what you end up with is you end up with this paste. And at the end, uh, it is extremely effective to use for all different types of skin conditions. Over the last 15 years, we've tested it on practically everything and you know some of the most luxurious spas around the country charge three or four hundred dollars sometimes for oxygen facials it's a hundred percent organic it's going to provide oxygen to the skin it's going to neutralize any chemicals and toxins that are on the skin because the skin is an exposure point to toxins and you do suck in chemicals and and toxins through the skin as well so that helps reduce the amount of the chemicals and toxins coming in it reduces swelling and redness. It calms the nerves and reduces the amount of pain. It increases. A lot of times, because it's expensive, I mean, Alex, this could sell for hundreds of dollars because there's always a limited supply. There's only so much we can make. We can only make three or 400 bottles. It's all handmade at a time. So it really is a luxury ultimate skin product. So a lot of people just use it for their face. It works as a conditioner really for anti-aging, wrinkles, but also people use it for so many other things. I use it for anytime my kids get injured, they have cuts, burns, scrapes on their skin. The, the beautiful thing about ozonated olive oil is, is it doesn't leave scarring. Women love it for cellulite reduction. I mean, it minimizes the appearance of cellulite. Or stretch marks, I guess, when they're uh, pregnant in, in, in the third trimester. Expanding on this, you're not kidding around because, you know, we all have wives, girlfriends, uh, you know, over the years and know that women go to these $100, $200, $300 facials and these oxygen-based ones are amongst the most expensive. This is a super high quality product. Uh, it's concentrated oxygen and ozone that then releases on the skin in organic concentrated uh, olive oil that's in a thick concentrated paste. Uh, it's amazing and it's really important for people to understand. We can sell this right now for $40.
introductory $29.95, even though we have a limited run, I, I just really want to give people the very best insane deal out there. And I just hope Dr. Group's able to produce a lot more because this stuff will sell out today. And the small profit we make helps fund our reporters being all over the world uh, reporting on game-changing news. Thank you, Dr. Group. Great job. God bless you. Thank you. Take care. Get it today at InfoWarsStore.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back live now into the second hour. We're going to have our reporters joining us coming up at the bottom of the hour from outside Dresden, Germany, where the Bilderberg Group is meeting. This is the group whose own documents in the last 50 years have been leaked to the BBC and ourselves and others, where they admit they're setting up a planetary government. They're going to use third world populations to drive down wages. They're going to use the imploding third world to then flood the West, causing a crisis. That crisis will be used to bring in authoritarian control and a global government to manage the collapsing third world. Because you got to have a global government to control the collapsing five plus billion, six billion people trying to get into the first world that conservatively maybe has 900 million people in it. More of them living in third world conditions. The carrying weight of the planet, the globalists say, is about to implode, but they're the ones undermining it and blocking innovation. And then hoarding the technology and good developments for themselves in tax-exempt corporate and governmental combines. There's an article coming up by Kurt Nemo that's excellent that I'll be covering later when we get into Bilderberg. Engineer decarbonization will result in mass starvation, poverty, and civil strife. That's what the British Ministry of Defense said, too, in 2007, because it's the plan. He says CO2 is beneficial, not detrimental. That's like saying sunshine is beneficial or water is beneficial or mommy is beneficial. A University of Cambridge engineering professor, we're going to get on, warns that the globalist effort to cut carbon emissions will result in widespread poverty, starvation, and civil strife. MJ Kelly, I want to get him on. Everything I cover in my film Endgame with the globalist emissions of within the first 10 years, of the carbon taxes they've wanted, it would cause conservatively one billion deaths. We've already seen world starvation numbers go from about 25 million a decade ago to over 45 million a year, more than half of those children. You say, well, that's how we get rid of so many people. Okay, but the globalists are setting up economic systems to cut development off. I mean, at least, you know, have the courtesy to go shoot them in the head and get it over with quickly. So this is soft kill. This is, this is Nazi Germany 2.0. This is Nazi Germany coming back home. Now, I'm about to go to Leanne McAdoo here in a moment, uh, who is on the ground in Long Beach, California. Uh, she's going to be at polling locations today, filing reports uh, to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. With exit polls, she's also going to be covering any civil unrest that comes if this is stolen from Sanders. And she's also uh, going to be at the Democratic primary event. Uh, so... Biggs is going to be going to Bernie primary event, and he'll be popping in during uh, the fourth hour today. He'll also be reporting on the bedlam he videotaped uh, Monday and over the weekend with the rioting uh, people with Mexican flags beating up any Hispanics that dared try to go to a Trump rally. Uh, of course, those folks did, did, did fight back. I can say that's better than the white yuppies who don't ever seem to fight back. I don't get why white people are so wimpy, but, oh, I mean, let me just say something that's, that's cliched. I guess that's what it's turned into. Uh, but but this is the type of stuff that's going on. And I, I want to get Leanne's take on this, though, because Bernie's gotten more real delegates, but Hillary appoints superdelegates and has stolen more than 10 states from him. So a lot of the math shows he's the winner. But even with Hillary and the media pushing her as the winner, some people wanted to bet on the winner. So they started voting more for her the last month. But still, it's neck and neck. And Bernie says he's going to go to the deal in Philadelphia and fight it. And so, oh, they're getting the riot police ready because, you know, Bernie Sanders are troublemakers. Well, they actually are, but they're actually in the right. When they talk about Hillary stealing it, they're not in the right beating up folks just trying to go see what Donald Trump has to say. A lot of them aren't even supporters. So Leanne McAdoo joining us via video connection from Southern California. Leanne, what are your observations? What's your take? What are you expecting to see? Hi there, Alex. Yes, we are right outside of a polling location here in Long Beach at the Long Beach Civic Center. Uh, there was kind of a rush this morning, people trying to get in, get their votes before they headed into work, uh, be sort of slow, trickle throughout the day. Um, but what we've spoken to some people here at the polling location, and they said that there's a lot of uh, a 
upset. A lot of people are really upset. They're wanting to see some sort of a surprise. And then, of course, this morning, perfectly timed with people who are about to go vote in the California primaries that, hey, you know what, Hillary Clinton, according to some super secret, super delegate, they've already all decided that she's going to be making history as the first female uh, nominee for a, a part this party here for the Democratic Party. So they, they put that out there perfectly timed to almost uh, take the burst the bubble out of people who are wanting Bernie to win and who are going to get out the vote and vote for v Bernie today. So it's going to be really interesting to see exactly what happens if Bernie is able to rally the support of all of these young people here in California and get the vote out. And then will the people's voice speak yet Hillary still steals it anyway with her superdelegates. Totally undemocratic process. That's right. And six states are going to the polls uh, on the Democratic side with a total of 694 delegates at stake. The most important of them, obviously, is California, which has 475 of those delegates. That's the biggest state, biggest population. And where polls close at 11 p.m. Eastern time, 8 p.m. Pacific, we're going to have extended coverage on InfoWars Nightly News tonight. Uh, after the news, we're going to have some live coverage of this uh, final and, quite frankly, most important primary. Uh, when I say final, it'll be, it'll be a shoe-in now after this. The second biggest prize is in New Jersey with 126 delegates uh, are at stake. Polls close at 8 p.m. Eastern. We have New Mexico, Montana, South Dakota, and North Dakota as well. And we're going to have Leanne McAdoo, Joe Beggs, uh, and others out there reporting on what's happening on the West Coast. Leanne, looking at this... Uh, I have a friend from many years ago who's a prominent Democrat here in Austin, Texas, and he gave me a, a, a call this morning to snicker and laugh at me and say the word is, uh, you know, Donald Trump's going to lose. Hillary's ahead. Polls show 10 points. Well, most people are intimidated to, to, you know, to say they're not going to vote for Trump because of the racism charge. Plus, a lot of other scientific polls show him three, four points ahead. So they're trying to sell this idea, just like with Sanders, that she's undefeatable, even though he'd have 50,000 in a rally, 10,000 in a rally. She'd have 500, 1,000 max. There's no one that I find supporting Hillary, even here in Austin, Texas. 90% of the liberals I know hate her, but not the guy that called me laughing at me this morning. They're already getting the big fix in. They're already getting ready to just steal it and hand it to her, Leanne. Absolutely. And that's what people are finally able to see this election cycle. We've talked about it for many, many years, but now the mass of people can see that this is a totally undemocratic process. These superdelegates are set up to make sure that the American people are never able to elect someone that will actually represent them. The party will not allow that to happen. And there's actually a really interesting story coming out of the L.A. Times, uh, kind of tying in what you were talking about earlier about the globalization, uh, how they're flooding the West with people who aren't uh, loyal and don't have any national instincts there with their with their countries. That's what's happening here in California. Now, we've been talking about how the left has been flooding America with all types of illegal immigrants that don't have any loyalty to this country. And they think they're going to be loyal to the Democratic Party because they want all that free stuff. Well, it turns out that they're actually seeing a surge in Latino voters who are vote. Uh, registering themselves as nonpartisan. So they're not loyal to the Democratic Party, nor are they loyal to the Republican Party. So basically what the left has done has flooded our country with a bunch of people who aren't loyal to anyone. And they're not even loyal to this country. And they're really upset with the fact that the Democrats have made all of these promises to them and haven't followed through. Well, so that's the issue. Really I mean, on average, black Americans have been screwed over by the Democrats worse than anybody. But there's all these platitudes and words, but doubling the unemployment under Obama uh, but historically, Hispanic voters are not going to go that way. I, I don't know why culturally that's different. But, but when the, quote, Democrats don't deliver uh, or deliver some scam, it's, it's not going to go well. Uh, and that's really more than Democrats wanting voters. The big multinational corporations want to drive down wages. I mean, that's really what this is about. It's what uh, Perot warned about, the giant sucking sound, uh, where things are so bad in areas of Mexico, they got to come up here for jobs. Uh, I mean, NAFTA and GATT has been a disaster for everybody but the elites. Right. And I think a lot of people are starting to see that with the trade agreements. And the big thing here in California, the big thing that's pushing the voting here is immigration. And so that's been the main kicker for a lot of the Latino voters is getting this immigration passed. But what is going to happen if they do open the borders, if it is good? It's the economy, stupid. Then once you all get here, what are we going to do for jobs? Sure. This is going to affect everyone. It's, it's, it's not like we that. border Switzerland, okay? Uh, we border a failed state that's collapsing. And I like Mexico, a lot of cool stuff. But, I mean, we're going to be a failed state, too. So 
You know, don't right. feel too too arrogant, folks. You, you, looking at Mexico or Venezuela, uh, look at what's happening in Spain and, and Greece and Ireland's in trouble. I mean, the whole world is teetering because less and less people are working. The governments are raising taxes by design to implode the carrying capacity of the planet. They are collapsing it by design. Mayday, mayday. This is a planned program. And Bernie Sanders will only make it worse. But regardless, it shows people are going for who they see as the outside candidate. They are going for a Trump. They're going for a Sanders. Even if there's problems with both of them. And so Trump and Sanders, for me, Leanne, are only a manifestation of the anger and the upsetness of people. And it's not going to go away if they put Hillary Clinton in. Absolutely not. She's just symbolic. It's just like with Obama, he was the first African-American president. She's, it's all symbolic. She's going to be the first female president. And it's, it's, it's symbolism. It's, she's not actually going to change the country. It's just going to be more of the same and even worse with Hillary Clinton because she's a total warmonger, total corporate elitist. She's a huge sellout. So we're going to get more of the same. It's crazy. I mean, the U.S. is collapsing in many areas. Uh, our protectorates are collapsing. Uh, more than half the counties and cities in California have already been bankrupt for years. They're getting propped up with more fiat garbage. Uh, we just saw uh, Puerto Rico go completely belly up and default. I mean, this is a time bomb on a time bomb. And people just laugh and joke and go, you know, oh, we're going to beat up Hispanics trying to go to a Trump rally because we're Hispanic we're waving Bernie signs and want free stuff. With him going, it's all going to be free, like Venezuela. I mean, he's in speeches saying Venezuela should be our model. The place is right. on fire, Leanne. Yeah, you don't see, basically what they're saying is all the people lining up for Bernie Sanders are just practicing for the bread line that they're going to be lining up for here soon. So, Wow, well, wow. Leanne, insane. I want to come back and briefly talk to you in this short segment and ask you on the Trump side what, what your view is on those developments being out in the middle of this, are you expecting any civil unrest, as I was asking earlier, uh, if, if Bernie loses California? Because here's the deal, folks. As dumb as some of these voters are, they know Bernie's the real leader of the race, okay? Nobody likes Hillary. By the way, coming up at the start of the next segment, before we go to our reporters in Germany at the side of Bilderberg 2016, I'm going to air a 60-second promo for the launch of what we're going to be doing with Tim Kennedy, uh, who in the near future will be going for the... Uh, title for the middle heavyweight for UFC and, and narrowly lost that, as you know, a few years ago uh, to a fellow it turned out was on a bunch of steroids. But what's interesting about working with Tim Kennedy is that most of what he's done is secret and he won't be getting into any of that with us, obviously, here on air. He's going to be bringing all his expertise uh, when he's been in the most elite army units there are and, and joint units. There's only really one joint unit. Everybody knows what that is, Delta Force. And uh, beyond Chris Kyle, and I'm not taking anything away from Chris Kyle, uh, but this is the super soldier. And uh, they've been trying to train him to take the guns and stuff, and he and the US Army are awake. Just like they said no to Al-Qaeda and said no to funding ISIS four years ago, and now that's all been declassified in the news. And uh, Tim Kennedy goes around with the, um, with the Pentagon doing, doing pro-military, pro-veteran promotions. And um, you know, at the level of the U.S. Army, they're even pretty much done with the globalists. So... Tim Kennedy's going to be joining the info war. I'm just telling you that right now, and other people as well. Because there's a real fight for this republic, and people are going to start seeing the real response in the defense of this country. This is only the beginning. All right, uh, yeah, we built it, and they came. Leanne McAdoo, uh, wow, so much going on. You saw the Joe Biggs footage. You've seen people being attacked. Just yesterday, Hispanics getting attacked because they're out on the street trying to vote for Trump. Uh, we're hearing there's going to be attacks at some of the polling places. Uh, they attack women, too. So uh, you wanted to go out there, but please be safe. Yeah, I, I thank you, Alex. I'm definitely going to be watching my back. I've got Zimmerman out here. Uh, unfortunately, Biggs is going to be in a different location, but I think we're going to be all right. But, yeah, I am expecting some excitement, I think, on either end. If 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 Bernie wins California, but it still goes to Hillary, I think all of the, the people that we've been seeing getting rowdy at, uh, at these rallies are gonna be out in full effect tonight so we'll see we'll see what happens no, i know no, no, i should no. be pretty uh, i should off. go out there but i wanted biggs to be with you uh, i'm not trying to be patronizing <laughs> but i mean I'd, I'd be concerned out there i want a few guys yeah. with me so you're gonna be with biggs right because you guys are split up right now well we're split up right now biggs is going to be at the bernie sanders event and we are going to go try to get to where the hillary clinton supporters are at uh but we might end up being where biggs is at if that seems to well be zimmerman's a big guy so hopefully you guys can protect each other yeah, he doesn't have his, his uh, he's not caring right now, so that's kind of a letdown for me, but... <laughs>
We are here in this liberal utopia, California, which is like a totally rundown state. I just I can't even describe. It looks like a third world country here in a lot of the parts of California. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I was there a few years ago and I said, I'm not coming back unless I have to. I was sitting there out by a pool with a butler. I was at a Hollywood star's house. And it wasn't Charlie Sheen's, it was another one, bringing me like fragois, and there was ashes raining down on me, and then like, you know, three women in bikinis out by the pool with ashes, with fires a mile away, and I said, this is like hell, I'm getting yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're just looking around and just unbelievable, I mean, California is one of the youngest states in the nation, and it looks so run down, what happened? How could this have happened in this liberal mecca? Well, it's because they have some of the highest taxes in the country, and they're only getting higher, Leanne. But, but whenever uh, Trump comes out and says they're shutting off the water, that's causing a lot of the farmers to go out of business. They, they write articles saying he's a liar. But th they shut off three major lakes in Northern California that destroyed over 100,000 farmers. That's admitted. Right. By the way, some of those farmers are Tim Kennedy's family. Uh, you know, original Californians are like as Texas as Texas or more. Like I run right. into all these Californians that are fourth, fifth generation and they're as cool as anybody I know that's like seventh generation Texan. And they'll tell you, they go, stop saying California is a bunch of evil people. We're not folks from all over the country came there in the world to get a free deal. The communists destroyed California. Exactly. Well, and that's what we're starting to see trickling out in Austin because as we know, Texas is great, but then you've got Austin starting to get full on Democratic uh, representation there. So it's kind of, don't bring the locusts here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leanne, great job. Uh, by the way, I love that green jacket. You know, that's my favorite. Thank you, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, well, that's, that's, that's the Irish in you. Uh, but seriously, yes. wh what else are you going to be covering? Well, we are also going to be out here. We wanted to talk a little bit about how uh, what a what a Clinton presidency would look like. We're outside of the Laugh Factory. And you can recall we did that whole uh, series with people submitting their videos trying to insult Hillary Clinton because she wanted to shut down people's free speech if they dare make jokes about her. So that's just one of the things going on here out in California with the Laugh Factory. And we'll we'll kind of be bouncing, bouncing all around here, meeting up with some of her, seeing if we can actually find any Hillary Clinton supporters. I have yet to find one. Leanne, tell folks how they find. Uh, oh, and, and, <laughs> so that's key. I mean, do a report on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, a reporter cannot find a Hillary supporter, but she's set to win the state. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Leanne, in closing, uh, fire out your Facebook or Twitter. It's important people to follow those as well, not just our main ones, because you post a lot of exclusive stuff there. Yes, you can follow me at Leanne McAdoo on Twitter and also Leanne McAdoo InfoWars on my Facebook page. And we'll be seeing you tonight live at 7 p.m. Central for the InfoWars Nightly News. That's right. Expanded coverage with our reporters from Bilderberg, Germany, and from California and more. I'm Alex Jones from Austin. Thank you for joining us. This is the Info War. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We've got our reporters in Germany. We've got our reporters in California reporting on the 2016 election tonight. We'll have coverage um, from 7 o'clock Central past 9 o'clock. We'll have a bunch of produced news packages uh, covering the latest developments this evening. And then we'll also have reporters uh, across the world uh, giving you geopolitical uh, analysis as well. I'll be popping in as well. And Jakari Jackson along with Darren McBreen and David Knight uh, will be running the show here from the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas, the center that you built with your support, your prayers, uh, and your financial support by buying super high-quality, cutting-edge products at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, uh, buying a lot of Hillary for Prison shirts, buying a lot of Molon Lave shirts, wearing those colors loud and proud, meeting like-minded people. I just love seeing the live footage and uh, covering it myself a few times, seeing black, white, Hispanic, uh, uh, male, female, wearing Molon Lambe shirts, wearing Hillary for Prison shirts, and, and, and unifying humanity around freedom. That absolutely freaks out Obama and the globalists. They, they do not want to show the crowds of people of every race, color, and creed going into these Trump rallies. They do not. They want to spin it and make it look like Trump is a racist. That is what they're pushing as hard as they can, but it's not working. They're also pushing a big hoax that Hillary's ahead of him in every poll. Just like she's ahead of Bernie Sanders, right? Oh, no, the superdelegates stole more than 10 states for her. And now Sanders, to his credit, saying we're still going to fight at the convention because we've got the delegates and the superdelegates don't speak for the voters. They've never implemented this before. 
they're doing this because they've got candidates they don't want like Trump and Sanders. I got problems with both Sanders and Trump. A lot less with Trump, obviously. I admire his courage, agree with a lot of what he has to say, but he says some stuff I don't agree with. The way he put the Mexican judge thing, I got it in the full context, but it was just giving him a weapon. But maybe that's his plan, knowing it would all come out later. It's, it's, it's just a complex issue. Now, before I go to Rob Dew and Josh Owens there, a lot has happened since they were on with us yesterday. We've gotten the Bilderberg list. We've gotten the intel. It's up on DrudgeReport.com. It's the Bilderberg Group that is the most important private organizational meeting. It's, it's a Spectre meeting. And George Soros basically runs the show now. It used to be David Rockefeller, but he's faded off. He's not there this year with a bunch of British and Dutch royalty and Saudis and you name it. Chinese have been kicked out of it for about four years, showing that big split is real. And they are outside the hotel where the Bilderberg Group is going to be meeting this year. They've been able to get inside and get footage, but they always try to push people out, so we're going to be talking to them in a moment. But before we go to Dresden, Germany, Tim Kennedy uh, was number two middle heavyweight, narrowly lost Hasn't fought in a year or two because he doesn't like some of the UFC deals where they don't even let you have sponsorship now. Can't have names on your trunks. Can't even pay yourself, basically. It's a joke. Uh, I mean, I thought that uh, thought boxing, you know, had some heads. And I'm not, I know Dana White. I've met him. I'm friends with Joe Rogan. I've been out to fights in Vegas. I mean, I've, but at the same time, I'm not really a big UFC fan because. I'm not into sports, and seeing guys beat the hell out of each other, I admire them. It's, 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 it's interesting. I'm all for contact sports. It's just that I'm so into the Second Amendment and other political issues, I don't have time to focus on it. But I have followed Tim Kennedy because he's lived in Austin many years. He's been friends with my high school buddy, Shane Steiner, for many years, who folks know. And they're an old famous rodeo family and Texas family, and our families go back some. It's strange, even though when I met him in high school, when I moved down here, I didn't know my grandfather knew his his grandfather and great-grandfather, Buck Steiner, but it, it, it's a small world. And then I, my dad had family that actually ran whiskey with him during Prohibition and stuff like that out of Houston. <laughs> Al Capone was even involved. You can't make, look up Buck Steiner and Al Capone if you think I'm kidding. Uh, but they're great folks is what I'm saying, pure Americana. And I was like, yeah, Tim Kennedy. So I started having dinner a few times, hanging out with him. They'd come by the office. We'd go over to the gym, watch him work out. Anthony started working out with him a little bit. These guys work out all over town for like twice a day, three hours a day, and then go out and shoot and do all the rest of it. And then I talked to some of my uh, Army buddies and, and people I know that are retired or been in Special Forces, and they said, well, you know Tim Kennedy's like been in more combat probably than even somebody like uh, the legend uh, Chris Kyle and then I didn't know those guys have been friends years in Iraq where the Army and the Marines uh, work with each other in Overwatch and Underwatch, nighttime watch, daytime watch, all this other stuff. Uh, and that they'd, you know, actually been in uh, you know, contact a lot. But the thing is, the Army doesn't let the Navy SEAL group do what they do. They don't write books about it. They don't talk about it. They don't do it. Because the Army's obviously contingent with special forces, probably has, what, 10 times what the Navy does? But from folks that know, Tim Kenny won't brag on himself. This guy... When it comes to being a sniper, right there with Chris Kyle, um, but only a legend in the Army. And when it comes to just all the things he's done, it's amazing. There's not just sniping, but commando raids, taking out top terrorists, you name it, he's been there. And the interesting part is, he's been a listener for years, but his grandmother and family were into the New World Order and fighting it. They're farmers from California. They've been attacked by having their water supply turned off. And now they try to train the military for gun confiscation and taking over capitals and uh, checkpoints and martial law and all the rest of it. So that's really woken the military up. And, and Kennedy's not telling me any of this. I already know all this. It's public. But he said, yeah, folks are awake. Yes, it's true. But I have all my other sources. I mean, like I had colonels on and like Schaefer and others. Four days after Benghazi saying it was an order stand down by Hillary to ship missiles into Syria and start the next wave and the next is Europe. That's all been declassified now. Judicial Watch came out a year ago with the headline. Let me give it to you. Secret Pentagon report reveals U.S. created ISIS as a tool to overthrow Syria's President Assad, close quote. And it was Tim Kennedy and people who were there saying we're not going to be part of this. So this is a big deal. And, and I'm just excited that uh, Tim Kennedy's going to be doing a lot of production with us. He's going to be but, but everything from organic farming to Amish and milk and to weightlifting, to shooting, 
to just the philosophy of a true patriot, dangerous patriot, bringing back men, bringing back families, bringing back women, bringing back Americana, bringing back real preparation with somebody that didn't tell me this, but I know it and looked it up as true, is, you know, run the presidential security details. You know, Delta Force assigned to Tim, I can have it. I already know this separate from other people. The point is, it's great to have somebody like this working with InfoWars because he's a total patriot. And we've got a four minute video where he talks about the Second Amendment we're going to be airing towards the end of the third hour today. But there's going to be lots of this. And then, of course, as he goes in, uh, coming up soon uh, for the championship and the rest of it, I'm not going to get into that. It, it's going to be a big deal for InfoWars and the fight against tyranny. And the military and, and good parts of our government are so angry at the globalist and Obama and this attempt to take over the country and the missile secrets of the Chinese and the rest of it that Tim Kennedy's his own man and does what he wants to do. Has a lot of courage to be doing this, but there's a lot of folks nodding their heads to him, and I'm just going to leave it at that. So this is a real defense of this republic. And so I would expect people like Tim Kennedy to want to work with InfoWars at a critical juncture like this in history. Now, this promo video we're about to promote uh, and, and premiere is going to go up on InfoWars.com the next 30 minutes or so. We're going to encode it and upload it and give it a great title. I don't even know what to call it. It's so cool. It's only a minute long, and this is just one day of shooting they did uh, on sniper training and on weightlifting and on search and rescue outside Austin, Texas. There's going to be a lot more of this integrated into what we do. Won't be shooting shows with me out there like Yosemite Sam, it'll be shooting shows and things with Tim Kennedy. And the craziest part, other really famous people want to be involved separately that just so happen to live here in Austin, Texas. So it's, it's, it's just, there's a lot of patriots just magically coming together. Uh, so let's go ahead and play uh, this piece. Again, it's not really for radio, so I'm going to narrate some of it, but here it is. True Patriot, this is just the beginning. It's not a drone, that's a helicopter coming in. This video will be on InfoWars.com the next hour. Hog hunting from helicopters, you got it. Infiltrating ISIS bases, oh, shouldn't have said it. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard a little birdie told me we might have InfoWars reporting from Syria. If, if I was just gonna like attach an idea to it, it's gonna be dangerous freedom. Start down your path to freedom now, infowars.com forward slash true patriot. We're gonna send that link out of that video out to everybody in the next hour, but this is such an exciting time. I look at Rob Dew, who we're about to go to, and Josh Owens, warriors for this republic and freedom worldwide. Tim Kennedy, Shane Steiner, and the editors of the video and everybody that made it possible, like, like Buckley and everybody else, we're in a real fight here. We're not asking for you to admire us. We're saying, join us. This is history. We're not going to just bow down to Hillary Clinton and George Soros, the New World Order. Our own military went to Obama, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, four years ago and said, we're not going to attack Syria with air power. In fact, we're taking al-Qaeda and ISIS out, and we're going to give the Russians the intel to do it. And Colonel Schaefer came on and said that meeting happened. And three years later, Cy Hirsch published it in New Yorker magazine and in the London Review of Books, exactly what we told you and broke here. The good people in the military came here to tell you they were trying to not be traitors and going up against the criminals that have hijacked this nation. You understand? I'm not bragging that we're at the center of the zeitgeist. I'm just telling you, when you see InfoWars, this is a 110% attempt at giving you the bottom line truth, straight shooting you Texas style. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. The truth is, the only reason evil men and tyrants flourish is that good men and women do nothing, to quote Thomas Jefferson. Well, guess what? Good men are doing something. And it was a great point that uh, Larry Nichols made. It was going to be popping in the fourth hour today. That Bill Clinton told him. The only thing he said Bill Clinton ever told him that was true. He said... Great men aren't just made as great men. Great circumstances make great men. That's a paraphrase, but that's exactly what's happening. The New World Order thinks they're just going to move against everybody, just going to win, and we're all going to roll over. That's not what's happening. 
All right, now we go to outside Dresden, Germany. They'll give you the name of the hotel, the details. It's all up on Infowars.com. We have the list of the Bilderberg meetings, an article by Paul Watson. Paul is landing in Germany right now, but he has to drive several hours to get to him. He'll be there uh, later this evening reporting. Uh, but Bilderberg 2016 to talk Trump, riots, migrants, and Brexit. These are the people that open the borders. This is their global plan. Literally, they're in there planning the end of Europe right now. And outside of that very hotel is Rob Dew. Rob, tell us exactly what's unfolded in the last 24 hours. Thank you, Alex. Uh, this is Rob Dew reporting live from Dresden, Germany, right outside the Kipnitsky Hotel. It's also called the Grand Hotel Taschenberg Palais. You can see the name up on the back of the hotel. And this is where Bilderberg 2016 will be taking place uh, starting tomorrow at noon. They're going to start kicking people out of this area. And uh, Josh, if you could pan around and show people the uh, security barrier that was erected today. This was not here yesterday. They started with the uh, concrete pylons and then they put wrought iron above them. And Alex, I want to make note too of this. Josh, keep it right there. Now, Alex, right here is a giant triangle, a pyramid with a circle in the middle representing the eye, the all-seeing eye. Wow. This is the same thing that we saw last year at the uh, the Interalpen Hotel, a giant pyramid. So these people love symbology, and this is part of it here at the uh, Taschenberg Palais Hotel where Bilderberg 2016 is going to be taking place. Obviously, we you're going to file a report on that. That is that is sensational. We have another report yeah. from John Bound on the same subject yesterday. They are really throwing it in our face. They really are. And, and it was funny, as we were setting up, a guy on a bike rode up to me and he goes, do you see the, the triangle and the circle in the middle? I said, yeah, we saw it. We as we walked outside, we, we saw the same thing. He goes, "He goes, can you believe it? Can you believe it? And then I said, hey, you want to be uh, you want to be on the video? He goes, no, no, no. And he rode off. But it's just people know what's going on. We saw signs yesterday at the uh, the march for the Brigitte. The people were, you know, there were some Bilderberg signs out there. And so people are aware of it. I think there's going to be big protests. Now, here's the breaking news, Alex. This morning when we were walking through the hotel shooting video, we, I saw a group of people having a meeting. And I didn't make much note of it, but I did stop and shoot a little bit of it, and we filed that video. Turns out that was German military planning security with the hotel staff. So now German military is involved in the security apparatus here for Bilderberg 2016. I haven't seen anything about that in the news. So I believe that we are That means taxpayers are having to pay for the overthrow of their own country. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's definitely because Angela Merkel is going to be here along with five of her ministers and the governor of Saxony. So they are, are, are gearing up to make this. But what's being said now, a group of seven or more is going to be illegal. They will not have any be, a group of seven or more anywhere around here. And they, they have a very small area compared to what, what happened yesterday or uh, last year where it was uh, five miles around the hotel. You've got just this little bitty area here that they're that they've got cordoned off and they got a little bit cordoned off in the back. But the big, you know, the big news is that I think the German military is now actively working with the governments and and everybody else to provide security here and I don't think that's ever been done. I had that confirmed by a source who actually thought they were police and went up to them and started talking to them and they said no, we're German military. Well, what's amazing is uh, they've they've always every fourth year been in Virginia or other areas like Georgia on the East Coast. But Bilderberg has officially come out and said, yes, we're Dresden, Germany. They released this today. It's up on DrudgeReport.com. Bilderberg meetings, uh, the official website. Now, again, just a decade ago, they didn't have official website. They would say it didn't exist. We were insane. Now, uh, a few years ago in England, they said, oh, the prime minister isn't going. Then here he comes, you know, by, via helicopter. Uh, and, and then an accompanying motorcade of his security. This is going on. We're pointing out the secret meetings that are happening. Yeah, they said they said the same thing with um, with Angela Merkel. She's not on the official list. Um, I checked it today, but everybody's been saying she's going to be here. So it, I, I definitely think she's going to be here, especially with the migrant crisis going on, um, and with all with the groundswell of of people starting to get up and be pissed off because they're taxed too much. The standard of living is going down. Uh, they can't afford to have just a decent standard of living by working two or three jobs, and people are pissed off. And that and you're seeing that all around. All around the world. It's not just here in Germany. It's all over the world. The people want to get out of the EU in England. And so they were never allowed to even vote well to be in support. it. They were never right, even allowed to exactly. vote to be in it. And that was a plan fomented in Bilderberg. And I think it's funny. We did that spoof video of Hitler in the bunker planning Bilderberg with his military officers. And here we see military officers here planning the security. So it, it's weird how, how fiction becomes fact and art becomes life. You know, and we didn't know that at the time. We just thought, thought it would be kind of funny to have, you know, we're coming to Germany. Let's have Hitler planning uh, Bilderberg.
Sure, because that's that spoof for folks that don't know. This has been going on for 10 yeah. years since that bunker movie right. came out in German, and everybody takes it and cuts it for political issues. And then people said, oh, you're trying to demonize Germans as if they're the source of tyranny. No, we're saying yeah. Hitler's a dictatorial figure. Merkel's a dictatorial figure. We're paralleling right. that the EU was a Nazi project, and so was Bilderberg. That's a fact. That's indisputed. Okay? Exactly. And people were wearing shirts. They had signs yesterday of Merkel dressed up as a Nazi. So... It's not far from the truth. But the media claims they're all Nazis out that are protesting her. No, the exactly. truth is we couldn't find Inverting any of them. Inverting reality. Inverting reality. Yeah, stay there. Rob News, our guest. We'll be back. Why is it so important that we expose the Bilderberg Group? Well, patriots 60 years ago started warning of plans for a global government. It was so mainstream that even Eisenhower talked about it, Richard Nixon, then Ronald Reagan as governor and Ronald Reagan as a candidate in the late 1970s. And he'd say, I don't want George Herbert Walker Bush on my ticket. He's part of that trilateral commission and that Bilderberg. We've got to actually have clips of that. But then they would just demonize anybody that talked about it like it didn't exist. And this is just one of the top shadowy room events. But it's trilateral commission, Bilderberg, and then they have different roundtable groups that interface as well, like the Royal Institute of International Affairs and the Council on Foreign Relations. But it's the same few hundred people and they are technocrats, they are globalists, they are eugenicists, they are anti-humans, they are post-industrialist. And they'll control left, right, fascist, Muslim, they don't care, to get their game plan. And so we're forcing this out in the open. It was about a decade ago that Drudge Report started linking to our articles covering Bilderberg every year. And media would go, look at Drudge linking to imaginary stuff, it's not happening. Remember that? So I don't mean to sycophantically plug drudge every day on a subject, but we got to give credit where credit's due, like General Dempsey saying four years ago, we're not going to be part of an attack on the Syrians for Al-Qaeda and ISIS. It's just not going to happen. And that's what's going on is we're just finding our conscience and saying no. And, and, and they've always denied this stuff's going on. We're forcing it out in the open to have a real discussion. Yes, Obama, you're shipping illegals in and legalizing them and letting them have TB and putting them in school next to kids. You're out of control. Oh, no, we're not. No, we're not. Yes, you are. Here it is in the Associated Press. We're forcing the issue. Rob, dude, tell me what you found inside the hotel. What else you're going to be covering when you expect them to throw you out? Obviously, it kicks off officially Thursday, but they usually kick people out now on Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm thrown out a whole four or five days before. I'm not even allowed in the hotel. Rob, have you had any issues? We have not had any issues yet. I did have, I was in the lobby earlier today and uh, talking with Luke Rudowski and Dan Dix, and uh, the, the uh, front counter guy was leering at us. And that's, a, 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 that's about as bad as it's gotten so far. We have been filming. Uh, we have actually have a video coming up of, of shots from inside the hotel showing the indoor pool of this tanning bed that looks like some sort of weird uh, uh, oxygenation chamber that probably Herr Kissinger will be using. But uh, going back to this uh, triangle, and I see you have that logo behind you. Somebody made a, a triangle with a circle in it. There's a good shot of it right there from from up where we're, we're at. This is uh, the courtyard, actually, of, from where the presidential palace is. The presidential palace is off to your left on the screen right there. Uh, the former presidential palace of the German king. And then right across is where the Bilderberg, uh, Bilderbergs will be meeting tomorrow. They'll start tomorrow at 12 at noon. They're supposed to start kicking us out. So that's what we're, we're playing. I haven't had any uh, issues since then. I've walked around and filmed. We went in the uh, courtyard, and they're actually erecting some uh, shade structure for uh, – I thought it was, they were building a stage for a performance. And I asked one of the, uh, one of the waiters, I said, what's going on here? I said, they're, they're building a, a tent, a big tent for everybody. So they're, it's this weird-looking dome tent. Uh, but there's a lot of history. I gotta here say though, you gotta love your job sometimes. But Germany is oh, just beautiful. Austria last year. You. Exactly. Yeah. Let me tell you, Alex. Germany is is blown away my expectations. Here's the courtyard right across the street. This is where the king used to have uh, animal shows and circuses and parties. Pan over that way, Josh. Look at that. I mean, it's just amazing. This is and this is surrounded by like a giant castle wall. Looks like Versailles. Climb up. Yeah. I, I don't know. Somebody might get some drone shots in a, in a bit from this vantage point. Oh. I don't know if that's gonna happen though. Hmm. Be a good spot to, to launch one. I Help me, I'm weak. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that that's what we're uh, that's what we're expecting. Um, I've also I, I'm gonna go meet with a guy who I interviewed yesterday. He's an Austrian. He was passing out flyers last night 
to people, and he got a ticket just for passing out flyers talking about uh, illegal immigration. Wow. So Again, they tickets don't want or arrest, that's admitted. This is the so-called free speech of the left, now coming here back in 70 seconds with Rob Duke. Then we interview Thank the expert on radical Islam. Coming up, you want him, you've got him. Going back to Rob Dew and Josh Owens, you guys are doing an amazing job. I, I, I mean, I just want to let you go so you can get work done. Uh, your Skype's degrading there as you're there in Dresden outside the old presidential palace um, overlooking the hotel where Bilderberg is going to be meeting this year. But get back to the censorship, Rob Dew. They're arresting people that criticize the open borders. They're trying to say no marches are allowed, but tens of thousands of Germans in different towns every day just ignore it. You covered a march yesterday. looked like it had 20,000 people. I don't know. It was huge. Um, but you said you actually witnessed, I hope you got it on tape, if you didn't, I understand. Uh, or you talked to somebody that was given a ticket uh, for handing out flyers exposing uh, that the sovereignty is being destroyed. I mean, is there any free speech left under the pig, goblin, uh, Bilderberg, daughter, uh, East German, uh, Merkel? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He, he rolled the ticket out and he showed it to me. I couldn't read it. And I had a guy next to me. I said, what does it say? So, well, he was given a ticket for... Uh, passing out flyers did and you get a video of this ticket. this is sensational i do it's going up we're gonna be, we're gonna have that out and um in fact we're gonna go meet him again to talk more about it because he kind of left that as an aside on this short little video i'm like though this is big news you don't understand yeah He's they're like, just used to it they're just tomorrow. used to being given a ticket exactly. for handing out a flyer being stomped down but here's here's also something i want i want to talk about alex lindsey graham is going to be here we have a sitting senator that's going to be at the bilderberg meeting that's got to violate several laws uh, I, the Logan I, I Act. Oh, Lindsey Graham loves you know what in our exactly. face. Oh yeah, yeah. So it, it'll be interesting. I hope I can uh, ask him a question or two. How does he feel about violating the Logan Act? Uh, is he going to be in charge of picking the male escorts for this year's Bilderberg? You know, there's a lot of questions I have for Lindsey Graham and why he's even here. He's probably here to help uh, steamroll our submarine Trump's uh, candidacy. I think. I think that's the main reason they're going to come up with an anti-Trump plan. They've got a lot of. Uh, Big backers. They always had the big money guys showing up here, all these financial guys. Vernon Jordan's going to be here, James Johnson. So I'm sure they're going to be collating a plan to get rid of the Trump president. And you know what else is on it? We have sources connected to the inside. Getting that Internet ID is their number one deal. Cashless society, get ready for that. They're going to have yeah. Zuckerberg try to quarterback that. Uh, Zuckerberg goes to the meetings as well. I, I haven't scanned the whole list yet. It just came out. Is Zuckerberg on the list this year? I didn't see him, but Eric Schmidt is here, Peter Thiel, and the head of LinkedIn. I forget his name uh, right off the top of my head, but he's also here. Oh, Sean um, Parker. Look you. Uh, well, I, I, I don't think that's his name. I would have recognized him. No, the head of LinkedIn, uh, who, which is the uh, business network. No, no, that's sort of they just put Sean Parker on screen. They just put Sean Parker on screen. Oh, they put Sean Parker on screen. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see who shows up. We'll be here tomorrow. We're going to have people also at the airport waiting to see who, who pops in. So it's it's gonna get start getting lively tomorrow here in Dresden, Germany, and who knows what it's gonna be like now that the military is coming in to run security because these guys don't play games. And what I heard last year is if you think the Austrian military is bad, wait till you deal with the Germans because they are ten times worse. So we're gonna find out in the next few days of what's gonna go on here in Dresden, Germany. Yeah, well, these are imperious traitors when they try to violate Germans' free speech. This is what Hitler did. And if the Germans don't recognize how much trouble they're in, they're crazy. They do, though. The French have headlines in AFP, like French scared as shroud of tyranny lowers, free speech banned, civil emergency, you know, for the darling little Muslims that are being brought in. It's all happening, and people need to get out here. If, if you're living anywhere in Germany, get out here now. I've got a guest coming on for about 40 minutes, and I'm airing a special Tim Kennedy interview that's four minutes long. But if you'd like to pop in right at the end of the show, if something else is developed, do that. If not, go get all those uploads up. Great job. Right. How do folks follow you on Twitter, dude? Yeah, it's at Dews News, D-E-W-S-N-E-W-Z. You can uh, find Good. me there, and there you go. Stay there. We have seen 5 million Muslims, most of the military-age men, brought in from war-torn zones where Saudi Arabia in the last five years has funded a multi-million person invasion of Syria. Most of them women and children as camp followers like the Huns behind the men killing even their fellow Sunnis and Shiites and Christians. Every several thousand allowed in, almost all of them are Wahhabist. You might have one Christian, it's what, 0.7%. And Obama tells jokes and says, we gotta let everybody in, not just the Christians. When he knows that, well, Syria was over 20% Christian, not now, they've killed hundreds of thousands of them. I'm somebody that was against all these wars in the Middle East because I knew it was part of a plan to destabilize it. 
Now the Bilderberg Group and globalist groups have funded the Arab Spring. Why is Merkel bringing in millions of these people? Why is Hollande? Why are the leaders of Sweden? We have our reporters in Germany right now filing a video report where citizens out handing out flyers at marches the German government has said is illegal, saying don't open our borders to, to, to these people, writing them tickets for handing out literature. Why are our governments doing this? Now, our guest, folks have wanted him on for years. I don't know why it's taken so long because I've read several of his books. Dr. Bill Warner has been a physicist, a businessman, and professor. And I'm not going to go over his whole the background, but he is now the director of the Center for the Study of Political Islam. And I've read some of his books, seen some of his talks. It's dead on from just my mainline study of history. But it's not well known by the public. Now, he could go through a whole history treatise with us. You can go to his website and do that or read his books. But I'd like to just get the short and skinny of it, why he thinks the elite is doing this, are doing this, where it's going, who's really in control of Islam right now, why would our elites ally with the most radical form out of Saudi Arabia, the Wahhabi, uh, uh, you know, Sunni group, and how do we counter this and respond to it? Why is the left so in love with it? I mean, you get some college student might have raped a woman, Six months isn't enough. Okay, fine. But then you got Muslims murdering their wives here in the U.S. and, and they get light sentences because, oh, it's their culture. What's going on? Why is the establishment so in love with it? So it, it, there's a long history of it, but he argues there was no golden age. Like Lord Monckton says, there was some times when Islam, you know, was less destructive than some of the stuff in medieval Europe. Regardless, it's destructive now. And radical Islam is the new Islam or was the old Islam and is dominating Islam. So I think the debate is over. So what is the establishment gonna do when there's more terror attacks in Europe and the West? Well, we know they're gonna take our liberties, saying it's our fault that the Muslims attacked us. And so he joins us now via video Skype, politicalislam.com. Thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Warner. Glad to be here. Okay, we got about 30, 40 minutes here. Uh, try to educate folks, try to educate myself. Uh, give us the Dr. Bill Warner boil down. Well, first off, everything that Islam does is supremely logical if you understand their logic. And their logic is laid out in the Quran, and it's laid out also in the words of Muhammad. And once you understand who Muhammad is and who Allah is, everything makes sense. The reason it's so confusing is, you see, there's two different Muhammads and two different Qurans. So Islam is based on dualism. It's always got a nice, peaceful side and a jihad side. And this is due to the very nature of who Muhammad was. i give you a real brief summary of his life. He preached a religion for 15 year, 13 years in Mecca and converted 150 Arabs to Islam. They drove him out of Mecca because he brought in dissension. Sound familiar? And he went to Medina, where he became a jihadist and a politician. He had 100 acts of jihad in the last nine years of his life. Not 101, not 99, but 100. But when he died, every Muslim, every Arab was a Muslim. So here, what do we have? We have a peaceful preacher, Muhammad, and then we have a vicious jihadist. But who was successful? It was the jihad that was successful, and it was the politics that was successful. So this dualistic nature of Muhammad, is reflected in the Quran, and so this is why you hear people say, oh no, Islam is the religion of peace. Well, yes it is, but it's the politics of jihad. So this dualism allows Islam to always come off exactly how it needs to be. Nice for the nice people, and not nice for the not nice people. So that's sort of the, the, the doctrine is at the basis of the confusion. Fundamentally deceptive. Uh, break it down yes. for us more. Yes. As a matter of fact, there are many uh, hadith, which advocate deception. Who will kill Ashraf, who has offended Allah and his prophet? This is a hadith. I will, Muhammad, but I will need to deceive him. May I do so? Yes, deceive him. And these are the words of Muhammad, so these are doctrinal words. There are 12 verses in the Quran which say that a Muslim is never the true friend of a kafir. I'm a kafir, and I suspect you are too. So here we have, you can be friendly but you're not actually a friend. So this is, once again, the threat of deception. But it also explains why we see that we have vicious jihadists, and then we have Ahmed, who works down at the fruit market, is a nice kind of guy. Which one's the real Muslim? Yes, they're both real Muslims. You've got the floor. Okay. So 
Now, why is all this so hard to understand? Because what has happened is, is that our intellectual class, the universities, have decided to abandon reason and instead become politically correct. One of the greatest tragedies we have in our culture today is the fact that, well, let me give you an example. I gave a talk in North Carolina and a president of a local community college said, this man is unbalanced, maybe, but he should never be allowed to speak. What do we have here? We have the president of a college saying that ideas should not be debated, but instead should just be suppressed. So this is what our root problem is, is we're giving up what is the cornerstone of our civilization, which is critical thought. I mean, Alex, once we throw our critical thought out and we have nothing in the world but ideological propaganda, we're already in the sluice. It's, uh, so our big problem is, is we've given up rational thought. But my guess, this is no news to you. And all over the world, they are banning so-called liberal democracies like Germany, even criticizing open borders, are saying mild things about controlling. So at a certain point, I agree that the, the politically correct are ignorant at the grassroots level. But above it, there's a more sinister plan. Well, I think that power, everyone loves power. And the, the left has certainly taken over the universities and also uh, the media. But now, you know, I don't just blame the left for taking over. I also blame the conservatives for having given up. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, which is a very religious town and, and fairly conservative, although not as much as the surrounding states. And there is no real cry for the ending of censorship. That is, the conservatives are not raising enough hell, Alex, just to put it bluntly, nor are the Christians. We're all being a little too nice. The cancer of nice is killing us, man. Well, you look at the PNAC documents that are from so-called conservatives uh, and Dick Cheney and others write about, we need a big Pearl Harbor event, catalyzing event, and then we can go in and you know, basically have a clash of civilizations and control the grand chessboard that's actually a Zbigniew Z Z Brzezinski idea of occupying the Middle East, not to reform it, but to then control uh, the crossroads of Europe and Asia and control Russia and China. Uh, but regardless, they've only started up and are now allied with the more radical elements. How does Saudi Arabia feed into all this? Interesting question. Let me give you an example. You've heard of Chechnya? Yes. Well, the Chechen uh, uh, is, uh, jihadists are the most vicious. They are the supreme jihadists. Now then, you need to understand that Chechnya used to be a Sufi-based kind of Islam. That is, singing, dancing, uh, sort of the loving side of Islam. Well, Islam came in in the form of Wahhabism and with Islamic money, in particular Saudi money, and now then the Chechens have become vicious jihadists. The effect is this effect is being seen in places like Malaysia, where Saudi Arabia used it moved into. In Malaysia, you had a Hindu form of Islam. That is, there was a Hindu culture there, and the Islam had not penetrated down to destroy all the Hinduism. But now then, with Wahhabi money coming in, we'll be, we see now in Arabia, I mean, I'm sorry, in Malaysia, the rise of a more vicious kind of Islam. So what is happening is, is that the Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia have infinite sums of money. You must surely know that uh, Saudi Arabia is spending more money to Islamicize the world, 80% of the mosques in America are built by the Saudis, than the Soviet Union did, did at the height of the Cold War. So we're in a war with a militarized system that uses a religion uh, as its cult control system, and it is proselytizing and radicalizing all their forms of Islam around the world and successfully taking over all the way down into Central Africa and Western Africa and Eastern Africa, all the way as far east as Indonesia. Uh, I mean, this, this is massive with our own governments bringing them in in mass. Oh, well, I don't think our government is resisting Islam anything at all. As a person who speaks to the subject of Islam, let me tell you what happens to those who do. I'm called a racist, a bigot, a hater, an Islamophobe. You're probably called the same thing. What's interesting about this verbiage is, is it never says, well, now, Bill, you know, when you say there's two different Muhammads, a religious preacher and a violent jihadist, you're wrong. No, 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 no. They say that I am a bad person because I bring these facts up. So once again, we've lost the ability to reason together. Sure, you're not supposed to quote Muhammad, who within, you know, his life took over an entire region. And then within 100 years of his death, I mean, let's go over some of the history uh, when we come back from break here of the expansion of Islam. Because we hear ah. it's this religion of peace. The Pope has come out and said that he's very troubled about saying Europe's Christian, uh, that he, what's the word, abhors it? What's the exact word? 
He dreads the Christian nature of Europe. I mean, wow, uh, you know, is the new pope, is, is he actually an ambassador uh, of uh, Saudi Arabia now? Well, I'm afraid uh, the pope does not seem to demonstrate any knowledge of Islam. He may have some, but he certainly doesn't demonstrate it. He just attended a meeting with a grand imam from Al-Azhar University, and the two of them came out with, we're going to have, we're going to give peace a chance. You could just hear John Lennon in the background, and that the true nature of Islam has is all about peace. And so they're going to. When it was Islam that destroyed the last Christian seat uh, of the old world in Constantinople, folks may have heard of it. It's now called Istanbul. We'll be back. There's a lot of different university maps out there, but you can just Google Islam Today map of the world, or you can also look at a group of maps. Uh, you know, Islam over time and it spread. And Europe almost collapsed. But when you go to college, you're taught that Europe invaded, and, and there's all these movies made by Hollywood where Europe invaded the Middle East for no reason. They were bad and they were horrible. Look, Europe did all sorts of barbarous stuff, but this is the place where the Renaissance came from. Everybody wants to come here because we created the modern world. And I see it as a form of cuckolding or suicide of the West to just bring in the most radical of these people and then say we have to submit to them. We're talking to Dr. Bill Warner of politicalislam.com, highly requested, uh, obviously, and I've read some of his books, seen his work. It's all spot on for my research, but he just lays it all out and gets demonized for it. This is a fact. So let's talk about the history of it some, sir. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. The boil down of uh, how it's expanded and, and where you see it going. Well, the expansion started with Muhammad. Remember, he was in Mecca, then he went to Medina. This movement from Mecca to Medina is called the Hijra. That is the migration. The Islamic calendar is based upon the Hijra. Why? Because it was migration that brought Islam its success. Now, fast forward 1,400 years, and what's happening in Europe? We have a new hijra. We have a new migration. And it's important to know that hijra is a form of jihad. Now then, I don't doubt but what there's some of these so-called, quote, Syrian refugees who are actually economic migrants, and they're not jihadists. But nevertheless, we do have to understand that Islam has a doctrine of jihad that is based upon migration. And uh, as soon as Muhammad died, Islam started bursting out of the Middle East took over the Middle East, and let's, let's stop right here and deal with the question. The, the Crusades, as we're taught in the West, is they were an evil act by cr evil Christians who were going to invade the pure land of Islam, the Middle East, and do bad things. Hello, before Muhammad, the Middle East was Christian. It was Islam that invaded the Christian lands of the Middle East, not the European knights of the Crusades. So I somehow know that we've managed to get all of this history turned inside out. But it was the case that the Crusades were a defensive move trying to reclaim the Middle East for Christians. Now, it succeeded only a part, but nevertheless, its intent was reestablishing what was originally there in the Middle East anyway, which was a Christian uh, nation or a series of nations. I mean, Iraq used to be Christian. North Africa was Christian. Egypt was Christian. Turkey was Christian. Even Persia was half Christian, but this is all gone under the jihad and the migration of Islam. So I think we need to reacquaint ourselves with our history. And when I say our history, I'm saying that the history of Europe is also the same as the history of the United States, and even in a strange way, the history of Japan and others. Because I'm talking about a meta-civilization here, not just a European civilization, but a civilization based on two critical points. One, the ethical principle of the golden rule, or unitary ethics, and the second is the intellectual principle of critical thought, because that's what our civilization is based on, and it's not just ours, but others. It's important to know that, that Islam denies the golden rule because it doesn't have one. It creates kafirs and, and Muslims, which is not a unified view of humanity. So these are all some elements of history, which unfortunately seem to be lost upon our current scholars in the universities. And of course, we have this whole Wahhabist system that was one of the most radical forms ever that from my research, correct me wrong, was basically based on the slave trade and robbing caravans. And then that somehow got linked up with British intelligence in 1900. They gave it funding to make that the brand of Islam around the Middle East. What an insane program. And by the way, let me challenge you on the use of one word here. 
The Wahhabis are not extremist or radical. They are the original it's, then. You're saying they're the real deal. Oh, no, they're, they're the real deal. They're the 24 karat, the same way the Islamic State. The so Islamic I'm State, using a politically correct Islam. term when I say radical Islam. The truth is bona fide original jihad Islam. Died in the wall. Died in the wall. Orthodox. The yeah, orthodox. Exactly. Islamic State is pure orthodoxy. The Wahhabis are pure orthodoxy. Everything they do and say, look, Islamic State goes through a lot of trouble. I read their material. They go through a lot of trouble to justify what they do. For instance, they were criticized for taking sex slaves. Islamic State says, hey, look at the data. Look at the information. Muhammad had sex slaves. All the companions of Muhammad except for one had sex slaves. The Quran gives the right for sex slaves, so don't criticize us for being bad Muslims. And then the left worships them. I do. The, the left is not the left. They're mentally ill demons. <laughs> you know, it's really odd. I support equal rights for women and attack the Sharia attack on women's rights. And yet, because I support the equality of women and oppose the Sharia view of women, I'm called a bigot and a hater. Absolutely, absolutely. If you don't support generally mutilating women and putting bags over their heads and keeping them as slaves and kidnapping five-year-old girls and trans-shipping them to be in snuff films, you're a bad person. We are going to have at least two hours of live coverage kicking off at 7 o'clock Central of the big primaries happening out in the West, California, the big prize. We've got Leanne McAdoo and Joe Biggs out there reporting. We've got our other reporters at Bilderberg 2016 in Dresden, Germany. The admitted founder of the EU is a Bilderberg Group member, Peter Southern. He's the head of the EU and UN Migration and Borders Committees, both of them. And he's openly told the BBC and others, we want to get rid of the whiteness of Europe. It's inherently bad. Well, uh, if you said get rid of the blackness of Africa, that'd be in, 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 in inherently racist. But it's beyond that. The globalists aren't planning to get rid of everybody in the West. They're planning to just bring in incredible tyranny. But to do that first, they've got to bring in huge, uncompatible groups and then we're all told to comply with them or the Muslims will blow you up. And I said clearly that's where this is going a few years ago. Now they're actually in the news saying we can't allow Germans to march and say control our borders because that might make the immigrants upset. See, not because they care about the immigrants. They're playing everyone off against each other. And the globalists are so authoritarian and have deals with Saudi Arabia now. They think this is controllable. They're on power trips. They're delusional. Or maybe they don't care if we all fall to radical Islam, which is dominant Orthodox Islam in 50 years. I just know this. I have two daughters, and I have been at the Domain in North Austin now. I even have photos of it. We're going to do a report soon. Like I, just had a, I just talked about it and had the memory, and I got physically, physically nauseous. And, and I was at Barton Creek Mall. I don't go to the mall very often. And I'm telling you, I guess that's the culture to be in the markets at night or whatever. It was every turn was women with full outfits on, full heads covered up. The burkas, not just the hajibs. And these women are born into slavery. These women are, and some of them are under Stockholm Syndrome. I mean, they go along with it and it'll defend it and teach their kids to blow themselves up. But Austin, you know, downtown, folks, it is crawling with Muslims in their full gear. And in the first waves, they're all, oh, pro-West, westernized, all this not now. Finishing up with our guests, I want to invite back for a full hour uh, in the near future. I really appreciate uh, the doctor coming on with us, his website, everybody should check it out, it's politicalislam.com, Dr. Bill Warner. Summing this up in the next five, six minutes, is anything I'm saying wrong on those fronts? Where is it going? Where do you see it ending? I mean, Europe is premeditatedly doing this. Why? By the way, I was recently in, uh, well, it was a year or so ago, was in uh, Macedonia. And uh, I was throughout the entire Balkans, which was a uh, really uh, educational trip. And when I was in Macedonia, I saw all these new mosques being built, and they're being built by the Turks, the Neo-Ottomans. The Turks have moved in and set up schools. Now, one of the things they will do at these schools is, is if you as a Macedonian will become a Muslim and wear the garb, they will pay you each month a salary for wearing Islamic garb. This is a form of civilizational war, which is brilliant. Islam That's right. That's why MSNBC, CNN bombs you with women in hijabs on TV, bombs you with how liberal and the liberal magazines now, even women that the top liberals wear it. I could be a sex slave, too. Exactly. Uh, so that's it. This is to throw it in our face. By the way, the name of your show is the war we should be fighting. This war of bullets and bombs that Bush did and that Obama's done, that is not how to defeat Islam. 
This is an information war. This is a war of ideas, not bullets and bombs. Yes, sir. And I'm sorry for interrupting you. Get back into that in a moment, but you're just you're absolutely on target. They're flaunting it flaunting and i've been in london just filming a public building and muslims run over you don't film me blah, 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 blah. like i mean they're very aggressive <laughs> so 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 go back to this war this uh, what they're doing well the word jihad is not well understood it does mean it does not mean holy war there are four kinds of jihad there's the jihad of the sword that's like on 9 11 that's violence murder and killing then there's jihad of speech jihad of writing and ah, the jihad of money. The jihad of war is not our problem. The jihad of uh, murder, we can deal with that. We have professional cops, we have professional soldiers. The war that's killing us, Alex, is the, word, is the war of speech and writing. It is the war of ideas. Because what we're doing now is we're saying that if you have the right ideas, then you can be condemned as being a racist, hater, Islam. Clearly, we're it. losing the war to Orthodox Islam. We're losing the info war. Yes, exactly. And why are we losing the info war? Because the people who should be fighting this information war, let me bring up, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, which is a very religious town. You would think that the ministers in the churches would be all for bringing in uh, Christians who are persecuted in Africa and Middle East. But no, what do they do? They say, oh, we need the Syrian refugees. We'll show how much we love them. We're going to cure this whole problem with love. So here we have ministers who don't know the Crusades from anything else telling us how to deal with Islam. Again, I do not blame the Muslims and Islam for winning. I blame us for losing. You understand the, the different viewpoint I have here? Yes, sir, doctor, and, and let me be clear. I'm somebody that a lot of the Muslims send countless emails and phone calls going, he used to be our friend, you know, five, 10 years ago. You exposed so much and now you're against us. I'm not against anybody. But clearly, I didn't want to have the clash of civilizations. I didn't want to destabilize those regions. I didn't want to fund Saudi Arabia pushing Orthodox Islam that, that goes after everybody else, you know, like they're heretics and kills them or enslaves them. I'm a friend to humans. But when my governments are allied with a bunch of radicals that turn women into slaves, and then they're telling me I've got to give up my speech, that's it. See, I'm in everybody having their rights. I'm Americana. I'm an Orthodox Americana 1776er. I'm a classical true liberal in the vein of Thomas Jefferson. And, and when people come after my freedoms, it's over. And so don't worry, uh, Doc. You've been helping win the info war or start some beachheads. And now the info war is on the job. So we're, uh, we see what you're saying. You're dead on and we're taking action. And, and I think more people are starting to wake up to this too, uh, aren't they? Tell you what. I, use, I do very little work on the internet. I'm an old man. I'm 75 years old. I read books. You may have been familiar with books in your past. Yes, sir. But my wife has taught me how to read on the internet. She's my researcher. I basically live with an intelligence officer. She said, Bill, scan the article, read the comments. And what has happened, Alex, in the, since 9-11 is that we, when I say we, the knowledgeable, those who actually know something about Islam, are beginning to dominate the comments. Our leaders are more corrupt and represent us less and less every day. But the grassroots, let me assure you, is beginning to wake up. All you have to do is read the comments. It used to be the word like hadith or sunnah were never heard in the comments. Now then, it is, it's very common for people to quote Islamic doctrine, doctrine about the hijra, doctrine about jihad, doctrine about everything. So we are winning at the grassroots level. Where we're losing is at the top. That's right. But the but, but the globalists know what when you start winning long term on the ground, that ends up going to the top of the pyramid later. That's why they're coming in with all these pushes for censorship is because they know we're turning the tide. And by the way, Alex, out of all of the things in the Bill of Rights, the most important is freedom of speech. That's right. Because once you lose freedom of speech, all those others about religion, press, uh, and Sharia right. law is, di I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, diametrically opposed to the First Amendment because it says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or proving the exercise thereof. That's the first line. Under Sharia law, it is state-run religion. You got it. You know, one of the biggest, <laughs> one of the things when I first started learning about Islam was listening to Islamic leaders, and they, they would say jaw-dropping things, and they were like, you got to be kidding me, right? But one of, remember the man who wanted to build the mosque at where the World Trade Towers went on? He said the Sharia and the Constitution are, are exactly the same document. While the Sharia is just an earlier form of the United States Constitution. You look at him and you go, what? Because nothing could be more contrary to our Constitution than Sharia law.
Sharia law says that women are not equal to men. Sharia law, by the way, also goes ahead to say that Muslims can have weapons, but not Kafirs, not unbelievers. So the by the way, Sharia speaking law, of Kafirs, let's talk about Islam a, a little bit and uh, its view of uh, black people, because I don't know why so many black folks worship Islam, Muhammad Ali, you name it. When uh, there's some stuff I don't want to repeat in, in, in the Muslim documents. One of the great ironies is Muhammad Ali coming out and becoming a Muslim. Do you remember what his original name was? It was Cassius Clay. You knew who Cassius Clay was? An abolitionist, a white abolitionist who wanted to get rid of slavery. And so he adopts the name Muhammad and Ali. Muhammad was a slaveholder. Muhammad was a slave trader. He tortured slaves. He had sex slaves. He captured people and made them slaves. The Every black man who came to America came through the hands of a Muslim trader in Africa. So here we have Muhammad Ali, who's now being praised as a really nice guy, but he did a very, his leadership was, for the black community, was disastrous. Because he wanted to say to them, oh, Christianity is the religion of the white man. Islam is the religion of the black man. Hello, are you sitting down, Alex? Because I'm getting ready to tell you something. Muhammad was called a white man in the Hadith. Which one is Muhammad? The white man leaning on his elbow. I saw the whiteness of Muhammad's belly on the day of the Battle of the Trench. The Hadith goes outside of its way to make sure to name the race of slaves and that Muhammad was white. So here we have, quote, Muhammad Ali bringing freedom to the black man in Europe by saying, no, we need to adopt the owner, we need to adopt the names of slave owners, Muhammad and Ali. Ali was Muhammad's uh, second cousin and brother-in-law. No, I got that wrong. Son-in-law. And he was also a slaveholder. So here we have poor Muhammad Ali thinking he's doing black folks a favor when instead he's sealing with silence the fact that every of uh, Muhammad Ali's ancestors, Cassius Clay's ancestors, came through the hands of an Arab slave trader in Africa. So... There's I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten that Cassius Clay was a famous abolitionist. That's true. Imagine, yes. get rid of the name of a Christian abolitionist uh, and uh, <laughs> someone which died trying to free black people, and then yes. you go name yourself after two different slave owners. Yes. <laughs> I just can't make not that just up. Slave owners, not just slave owners, slave traders. We have on two different occasions Muhammad standing by while black. No, I know. That's what went on in that part of the Middle East. That's 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 historical. That's that's in the Quran. I, I just can't. I, it, that's what I mean. I, I just they've had these leftist TV shows and movies made about me where they just randomly have actors act like they're me or have other actors say, I got my news from Alex Jones, a homophobe that hates N words and, and who hates all the Muslims. And it's just like weird leftist. What's that guy's name that did Mr. Show and all that, the big comedian? And it's just funny to them to just put these lies out about us when I want everybody to be free. I don't want anybody to be slave. I don't hate anybody. By the way, let's deal with something here. I, if you're listening to me, now I have dealt with one Muslim, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, but I do not criticize him other than to say he's misled. What I talk about is Islam. I do very little or almost no talking about Muslims. That's right. We're not demonizing the individuals. We're demonizing what they claim to have an allegiance to. And by the way, what did I say about Muhammad Ali? He was misled. He was fooled. He was deceived. So <clears throat> we need to deal with the subject of Islam. Islam is the doctrine found in the Quran, the Sarah, and the Hadith. It's in three books. It's Allah and Muhammad. Unless you're dealing with Allah and Muhammad, you're not dealing with Islam. And so we do not need to bash Muslims. One of the ironic things is I'm called a Muslim basher. And it's like, no, I don't. I just tell you what Muhammad did and said. I do not even bash Muhammad. I simply say, here's what he did. Here's what he said. When I told you that story about Muhammad advising deceit, I didn't say that Muhammad was a bad man for doing that. I just said, he said, deceive him. So we don't need to bash people at all. As indeed, the first victim of Islam is the Muslim. And by the way, I've met many Muslims who know almost nothing about Islam. Oh, of course. Listen, I, I, I mean, I'll say it. I, just because of Muslim friends I had in high school and college, I was prejudiced almost towards not telling the truth because I thought these are such nice people. This couldn't be possible. Well, those are the doctors and the scientists, and a lot of them are heretics, I'd say, uh, not in their own oh. minds, you, you know, that tried to get away from Islam and be free. I mean, a lot of these folks aren't like secret jihadis sneaking in, climbing over the barbed wire to get us. But now you go to these poor, back, 
you know, trodden, falling apart Muslim countries, and they're bringing them in from here, these folks, just like you go into poor areas of the South, that's when you find all the trashy, stupid clans people. And it's the same thing. You get around, you get these really trashy, anti-human, anti-woman, orthodox Muslims, and they are just like from another planet. We interviewed one in Germany yesterday, my crew did, and he goes, I hate Germany, I hate these people, but everything's free and I'm staying. I'm jihadding. And he's just this arrogant, like, out in the open, I'm going to get you guy. They're just so, uh, some of them are so honest about it. Well, actually, they are quite honest about it because they know this. They're not going to be attacked or harmed. That is, they can say all these things and still pick up their welfare check. So you know, they've, they've learned that they can do and say anything they want to do, and they'll get a free pass on it. Well, sir, I want to invite you back up in the near future for a full hour to and send me in like a uh, email with talking points. I don't normally do this with with, with a lot of guests, but so we kind of do an educational presentation with some slides, some of your books, your materials, and then do a whole hour where we go through say A to B, C to D, you know, all the way to Z, and because we're also TV, not just radio, so we can create an a educational video. Uh, on, on the 101 of what's happening. And is this a culture you want to live under? Because Orthodox Islam is always running around enslaving other Muslims and killing them to make them become more hardcore and more extreme. And so if you want to live under a bullying system where your wife and daughter can't drive cars, where their genitals are cut off, and where uh, women are executed if their husbands feel like it, uh, then you probably want to support Gloria Steinem because she supports these people. And by the way, the, even in the Islamic State, who is, vicious, who is the most viciously attacked? Kafirs? No. The ones that are mostly killed are bad quality Muslims. They're Shia or there's someone who's not observant oh, enough. Oh, look at this headline. Every day at 17 this day, 200 and something that day, the latest 200 plus women have their heads cut off on video, Muslim women, because they refuse to become sex slaves. They have to make them, quote, agree to it because they weren't good Muslims. We'll put that on screen. I mean, what type of freakazoid garbage is this? Well, one of the things, here's the mark of a professional, Alex, and I think you've just illustrated the point. You can't make this stuff up. That's, that, that means you're a professional when you study Islam. Is that? And this is serious. Everyone who knows a lot about Islam, like the, th the fact you just quoted is like, what? What? How can you make this up? And you can't. 250 women in... Uh, and that's uh, just the one they pulled up from uh, a few months ago. There's another one today here in my stack somewhere. And then this was little little girls they were killing. I mean, I, mean, I read some story where 100 plus men raped a six-year-old till she died. What type of whacked out loon people are these? I mean, they're crazy. Well, I don't... Uh, that kind of suffering, it just disturbs me. But what also disturbs me is, where are the feminists on this issue? I want to know. They talk about a glass ceiling. They're busy attacking you. What? They're busy attacking you and I. I guess they are. But look, the suffering of women in the Middle East under Islam needs to be dealt with fairly. And if you're a real feminist, I think you would care for somebody who's being brutally, painfully tortured, even if they're not a member of America. So, I mean, look, I'm for women's rights for all women, and that's one of the objections I have to Islam. Absolutely. Well, listen, doctor, look forward to speaking to you again, politicalislam.com, Dr. Bill Warner. I take the gloves off for any form of tyranny, whether it be the New World Order, communism, uh, Orthodox Islam that is taking over whatever's left of Islam, and it's, it's, it's just all a plague on us all. It shows our ruling controllers are evil, absolute trash, or they're the most inept, morons the planet's ever seen. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll be back with the big Tim Kennedy premiere. He talks about the Second Amendment more and why he's joining InfoWars. I will be Skyping into the studios tonight uh, during the multi-hour live coverage starting at 7 o'clock central at InfoWars.com forward slash show. There'll be free feeds on not only news 7 o'clock central, PrisonPlanet.tv. I want to thank PrisonPlanet.tv members. You get 20 people can use the membership each month uh, for $5.95. But a lot of the times, the feed goes free for everybody. But those of you that are members, we thank you for helping others get the information who are not aware of the broadcast or who can't afford it. PrisonPlanet.tv, if you want to be a member. Briefly, be sure and sign up for Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. You get exclusive videos, articles, also big discounts and promo codes. Sometimes as much as 50% off products at InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, when you are at InfoWarsStore.com, you're not just getting a wide range of really useful, high-quality nutraceuticals, 
uh, Patriot Apparel, shortwave radios, non-GMO seeds, books, films, you name it. You're also funding the tip of the spear in the fight for human liberty. And you can get free shipping on orders of $50 or more, whether it's G-Shock watches or Survival Seed Vault uh, or water filtration. And then you got promos on top of that, 10% off on the water filters with promo code WATER. And then you can get 10% off on top of that when you sign up for auto ship on different items that are things you reuse, like nutraceuticals and vitamins and uh, other things like coffee. So shopping with the good guys is what helps us fund a true independent news organization. We have a new product, Extra Virgin Olive Oil, loaded with pure oxygen and ozone, unprecedented. That is a limited time run, so take advantage of that discount out of the gates. Uh, but let's go ahead and go to this powerful report with Tim Kennedy. I believe in dangerous freedom. I'll take dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery any day. The reason that I believe that is any other form of, of this construct of freedom can't materialize, it can't, it can't ever be substantial without risk. You know, the, the, the part about being a libertarian, the part about being and understanding what individual responsibility means, there, there is some assumed risk that goes along with it. That's knowing that the government can't take care of me all the time. That's knowing that the government's not going to give me a free cell phone. That's knowing that the government is not going to give me food when I'm hungry. That's knowing that I have to take care of myself and my family. I believe in freedom. I believe that I should be able to say whatever I want, whenever I want when it doesn't hurt somebody else. I believe in freedom of religion. I believe that there should be procedures when the government's gonna come and search my home or when I get in my car. Like, there, there's a reason that we had all these, you know, the constitution and every one of those wonderful amendments. The only way that every single one of them can exist is because of the second amendment. You like freedom of speech? Well, you better like your right to bear arms, because you can't have one without the other. The Second Amendment was not written for hunting deer. You hear people say like, you know, they, they had muskets back then. There's no way that they could have imagined the type of technology that we have today. No, that's, that's malarkey. They, they knew what was coming. The Founding Fathers were brilliant. They were engineers. They weren't like the politicians of today that never had a job in their life. They actually did things for a living. When they wrote that constitution, there were already guns that were essentially Gatling guns. They knew that those ty that type of technology was coming. So when people are like, you know, do you really need an automatic weapon to go deer hunting? Do it. It wasn't written for deer. If the deer were gonna then come try to imprison me and then search my home and then take what's mine, then yeah, I need a AR-15 for deer hunting. But that's not the case. It was written for the government. It was written so that the people always have more power than the government. Now that preponderance has shifted. It has gone from the people being the ones that have the power to now we're scared of the government. We have to go back to a dangerous freedom. That's where people have more power than the government. That is people having guns. That is people having better guns than the government. Yeah, it's scary. But last time we had somebody cruise into San Bernardino into a gun-free zone, Two people, a couple of guns, killed countless. All right, we're going to fade that down. And the, the full video is going up the next 20, 30 minutes to Infowars.com, along with more exclusives. We're launching a lot of new operations in the face of the New World Order, and Tim Kennedy's a big part of it. Fourth hour, we're going to be right back with another report live from Germany at Bilderberg, and then I'm going to hand the baton to David Knight. Infowars.com forward slash show. All right, I'm going to ride shotgun a little bit into the hour with David Knight because there's some news I didn't get to that I've got to get to. I'm sure he's going to cover it too, but report uh, Trump refused $200 million to pick Gingrich as VP. Okay, that happened. That comes from inside the campaign a month ago. And then I talked to other little birdies, and they said, yeah, how do you know about that? And we're pretty shocked. But then uh, they said, yeah, wait for Gingrich to start attacking Trump. That began two days ago. Here's the article, report Trump refused $200 million to pick Gingrich as VP. Establishment uh, tries to control Trump through VP pick, and that's that whole Sheldon Adelson situation. He's pledged $100 million, but he said $200 million if you pick Gingrich. As soon as he didn't pick Gingrich, Gingrich started coming out against him. And notice now the heat's really mounting against Trump. Trump's for real, folks, and that's why they're pulling out all the stops right now. Uh, let's go to our intrepid reporters. I, I want to talk some to you, dude, and then we come back from break a few minutes uh, with... Um, Josh Owens to get his take on this. He's not just a camera guy, he's a reporter too. But what's happened since we had you on about an hour and a half ago, uh, my friend?
Well, as we were walking down in front of the hotel, we did a quick report about the symbolism in front of it. This is Rob D. reporting live from Dresden, Germany. And guess why I ran into? Alex, you may remember this guy from last year who confronted Franco Burnaby at the train station. This is Mr. Tillman, who is now a mat. Look at him. He's all dressed up now. He's ready. He's back. He's got a camera crew with him. And he's ready to take on the globalists and confront more people because, you know, you just can't stop once you get going. Mr. Tillman, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. I now have three people with me. I have a little camera team. So I try this again now. I mean, yeah. we can search for them at the train station, at the airport, and then we have hopefully have another video, I guess. And, and, and Alex, Mr. Tillman is just uh, uh, an example of what one person can do with a camera, confronted two different of these elite globalists here, one at the airport, one at the train station. And they gave us comments that were huge in newsmaking. We're exposing the shadow government. That's the process. Exactly, exactly. And that that is the testament to what's going on here. Now he's back. You know, he's tripled his uh, his reserves. He's got three guys now, so they can cover multiple locations. And it's just a testament to what one man can do. And so I, I'm, I'm doing this for people out there who are watching this, who are sitting on the sidelines going, should I go to Bilderberg? Should I do? Yes. Come out here. You never know. You might be the one guy somewhere who gets the one globalist and, getting out of the car. And then, you know, and then other people will, will emulate what you've done. And it just gets, this is part of humanity reawakening. Exactly. Tell me, give everybody your uh, YouTube channel so people can watch what you're doing. Uh, this is two hard names, but one is Bürgerberg. It's like Citizen, Citizen and Bilderberg, like Bürgerberg with an U. And it's Traukheim Promi. It's like German Mark. Yeah, that's why on the web, search just by your name. Just, just tell folks your name. Yeah, Tillmann right. Knechtel, so... No. Yeah. Connect, which uh, they were telling me actually connect to his last name means slave but this man is not a slave he's a free man he's not acting he's not submitting well, well sure he's not he's told what he's, told. he's Most, getting out i mean the word swartz in europe means black and all that meant was you were suntanned from working like schwarzenegger means black plowman and and and, and so exactly. yes it, it, it just means lower caste but thank god it's the lower caste in the world that always tends to come up with the innovations not all the inbred people like prince charles with snot dripping out his nose Exactly, exactly. So it was, it was funny just running into him just now. He, he's going to be here for, for the rest of the week just covering what's going on. And this is, you know, other people need to get out here and do this. We, got, we need more people. We need numbers. We, uh, this is how things get done. This is citizen media at its finest. You know, InfoWars is, is we're a big dog out there, but we need more people. The more people we get, the more things the get more done. The more angles, the more human, minutes. human intelligence. Exactly. Exactly, because somebody needs to get Lindsey Graham and take him to task. What are you doing here as a sitting senator coming here to negotiate with people in private? How do you what like you your world here? government being exposed? Why are you part of flooding us? You know, this organization is flooding our borders. You're a traitor, Graham. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's all he's part of the whole game. And then you have all these German politicians that are going to be coming here. They're all they're all welcoming the migrants, giving them free housing, free food. What do you think about what's going on in Germany? I mean, yeah, the politicians just betrayed us. I mean, they let in like they just doubled or tripled like the immigration rate and the immigration rate was already pretty high. I guess we have the biggest immigration in Europe. And by the way, he's not allowed to go to Saudi Arabia. They haven't taken one of the little jihadis there because they, they, they're they not taking jihadis. They're sending jihadis. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. And it's going to be 90 billion, they say, over the next 10 years just to house and feed these people and give them, uh, you know, not let them work. So they want to bring these people here, not let them get work, not let them integrate in society. What are you creating? You're creating ticking time bombs. That's right. Okay, okay Rob, great job. I want to talk to, absolutely, right. I, I want to talk to, uh, briefly uh, to Josh Owens when we come back, and then I'm going to let you guys get back to uploading videos of the great work you're doing. Watch their videos as they're uploaded but by the hour at Infowars.com. Uh, you can read the whole list at DrudgeReport.com of the Bilderberg. We're only a few hours away from the kickoff of live continuous coverage of the Final big push. They say it'll be locked up by then with these six states, with California being the big prize tonight with our reporters out in California, Leanne McAdoo and Joe Biggs and uh, Michael Zimmerman. Then, of course, we've got uh, our intrepid reporters, Paul Joseph Watson, who's now in Germany but has to meet them, flew in from the U.K., from formerly England, uh, into the EU proper there, uh, where Angela Merkel is helping open the borders. They're going to be uh, there reporting tonight as well, th right through this weekend at Bilderberg 2016. What a victory it is for humanity that, the, that they're being exposed. What a victory that the shadow government apparatus is being brought out in the open so there can be a major debate about it. This is something the globalists absolutely hate. They cannot stand it, but it's only going to get worse for them as humanity's crash course in reality uh, only expands, deepens, uh, and explodes. But a report I've had in my little hand for an hour that Kit Daniels handed me is so important. I asked him to do the report. We gave him the sources, the intel. He did it. I should have been covering it in the last hour. It's so big because I saw 
the last two days, Newt Gingrich out savaging Donald Trump over all sorts of stuff, attacking him, misrepresenting him on different subjects. And I knew it was coming. I mean, this is one of the top globalist minions in the U.S. Gingrich is super bad. He helped lead the whole conservative libertarian revolution in the 90s and 93, 94 down a rat hole. He, and then he gave us Boehner and, and, you know, all these other little creatures after him. Just one rhino after another. But report, Trump refuses $200 million to pick Gingrich as VP. Establishment tries to control Trump through VP pick. And I have this confirmed. I knew about Adelson offering Trump $100 million for four days before it was in the news. And I knew all about the, you know, the, big, the other big meetings. But I have multiple sources. This is not from Stone, but I brought this up to Stone. And he, let me just say, I don't have no comment on what he told me. But Donald Trump refused $200 million in donations to take Newt Gingrich as vice president. Insiders told InfoWars, the mainstream media report that the uh, casino magnet uh, Sheldon Adelson was willing to contribute $100 million to Trump's campaign. But what wasn't reported that about a week later was the additional $200 million uh, the establishment offered Trump in exchange for picking Gingrich, one of the first D.C. insiders to try and cozy up to the mogul. And I think I should just add that I gave this all as a gestalt to Kit. Adelson offered him $100 million, then he upped it to 200 So it was an Adelson then offered an additional $100 million, according to sources. So we should just add that there for clarification. When Trump uh, declined the offer, however, Gingrich started lashing out on him publicly, including his recent claim that Trump made one of his worst mistakes for uh, pointing out the federal judge handling the Trump University lawsuit has ties to the controversial La Raza Hispanic Nationalist Organization. Well, he's a lawyer for him and gives scholarships to illegal aliens. I don't know what Trump's reasoning was, and I don't care, Gingrich told the Washington Post. It'd be unlikely for Gingrich to take such a weird stance in a matter uh, unless he was already bitter at Trump and trying to pressure him to change his mind. But it's in Trump's best interest to pick someone close to him ideologically as VP, such as Senator Jeff Sessions, who we believe it's going to be. Let's just say that's 95% right now, to avoid a potential assassination attempt. And then we go into the whole Ronald Reagan attempted assassination and the rest of history. And we link to the video where we had uh, Roger Stone in studio with us, uh, breaking down his take on who the VP will be and concurring that it all points towards Sessions. Uh, but we're about to hand the baton to David Knight. But first, I wanted to go back to Dresden, Germany. And by the way, when you hand the baton, David, you want to keep talking to these guys, you're welcome to or whatever you choose. Um, I know David's always got a lot of stuff I haven't covered. He's about to hit and some things I have covered. It's just good to always get his perspective and then to go, oh, yeah, I forgot to cover that. Glad David's going to cover it. So David Knight sitting in there in the Situation Room. I'm in the War Room. We are broadcasting radio slash TV at Infowars.com forward slash show and TV stations, UHF, VHF, cable, uh, and radio stations across the country and the world. But going to Josh Owens, who's our wonderful reporter and cameraman, there with Rob Dew. Uh, he's always uh, got a lot to say. Wh what have you observed since we talked 24 hours ago, uh, Mr. Owens, there at the site of Bilderberg 2016? Well, there's a lot going on, obviously. Uh, if we were another news agency, we would probably come out here and just cover one thing. We would probably just cover the, the migrants. We would just cover Bilderberg. But that's not what InfoWars does. we got a lot of irons in the fire. We're doing a lot while we're here. And that's how, that's how it's supposed to be because we actually enjoy what we're doing. We actually enjoy being here, covering, showing the people what's really going on. So we got a lot of things going on here. But one thing that I don't think anyone's talking uh, has talked about yet, it is strange that usually every four years Bilderberg is held in the U.S., so that would mean, for election reasons, that would mean this year Bilderberg will be in the United States, but it's not. Now let's think about that. Why would it be in Europe? What's going on in Europe? What's the thing that's all over the news? It's the migrant crisis, as if it's not planned. Uh, this is the curriculum. Th this is what the United States is planning for with the open borders, with all of these social justice warriors going out and attacking everyone at Trump rallies. This is what they are hoping to get out of it, Europe, this big a melting pot where everything is crumbling. Uh, you, you saw the videos where we went to the refugee camps. They bum rushed us. They freaked out because we had a camera. We see that in America too, but uh, we're not trying to hurt anybody. We're not, you know, on, on, honestly, we're not even trying to spin a story. All we're doing is, is asking questions. So you see them come up and attack us. But then the concern then is that when the city official comes up, he says, well, 
um, we don't want them to feel threatened, but it's okay if we, if we feel threatened, but not them. We see this happening in the United States. So it's very interesting to note that Bilderberg should, as the past, should be happening in the United States now, but it's not. It's happening in Europe, and I believe it's because this is the curriculum. This is where everything is heading right down the toilet bowl. Well, Josh, excellent point that we should call this little live video piece, uh, you know, secret to why Bilderberg's not being held in the U.S. this year revealed, or ask the question, why is Bilderberg not being held in the U.S. this year because every fourth year since it was started back in the 40s, right through the 50s, uh, Bilderberg has been held uh, every fourth year in the United States on the East Coast. And, of course, it was officially supposedly around, you know, in the early 50s, but it's been around since the end of World War II. It was just given the name Bilderberg off the Oosterbeck Holland uh, Hotel where they, uh, you know, officially codified and signed a transatlantic agreement to merge a European Union with an American Union with an Asian Union, a basically Rockefeller trilateralist plan with the British Empire. And the founding documents were given to BBC, what, 14 years ago, and concurred with everything Jim Tucker had said, everything investigators had said, it was spot on. It's a planetary plan of unelected world government. Well, look at TPP, look at NAU, look at the EU. You don't vote to enter it, you're under it. It starts making all your laws, you can't get out of it. It brings in all these illegals and then arrests you if you hand out flyers or gives you tickets. I mean, we are witnessing a totalitarian takeover, and it's simply amazing, Josh Owens. Exactly. And we see uh, Paul Joseph Watson's article. They're going to be talking about the Brexit. They're going to be talking about Trump. Obviously, they're going to be talking about Trump because they're in damage control mode, trying to figure out what to do because the people have spoken. Trump is uh, the Republican nominee, and um, they're free out. Yeah. Obviously, that's why there's Lindsey Graham, Graham coming down here. All right, your Skype's breaking up, my friend. Great job. Uh, again, keep uploading the videos, but don't kill yourselves. I don't want to get too exhausted before Bilderberg starts. I know you, you're still able to be in the hotel. Uh, it might be good if, if, if the video works or later towards the end of the hour, if David wants to spend five minutes, to have you guys maybe do a tour live inside Bilderberg, or does that not work? you think they might throw you out? If it's out, then fine. Then be better. All right. Well, gentlemen, do what needs to be done. I really appreciate the fine work you're doing. This is true journalism, and we're just openly teleprompter free. Thank you, Josh Owens and crew. Thank you. All right, let's hand the baton to the one, the only, David Knight, right here in Austin, Texas. Uh, just remember, this is all very expensive, what we're doing, and I'm putting everything all in with more reporters, more researchers, uh, and with crew on the West Coast, crew in Germany, and it's all because you buy the products at InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com, and we've got some new specials running on the side today, but whether it's non-GMO heirloom seeds you're buying, or a Hillary for prison shirt, or a shortwave uh, solar-powered radio, or a book on you know, Bilderberg, all of that funds this operation. We have free shipping on orders of $50 or more. Uh, we have 10% off if you sign up for auto ship. We have 10% on water, filter, water filters with promo code WATER. You add all the specials together, I mean, we have amazing prices. We have privacy and security, the little pockets that block your cell phone being tracked when you're out driving around. I mean, a lot of the, and your identity being stolen. There's so many things you need at InfoWarsStore.com. You get great pricing, sometimes the lowest pricing. And by shopping with the Patriots, you fund the tip of the spear. So check out all the different items at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling toll-free, 888-253-3139. I tell you, David Knight, I'm proud of our operation. I'm proud of what we're able to do. I'm not bragging. It just really feels good to go, wow, we're reaching 25, 26, 27 million people a week. Wow, we've got reporters going all over the world simultaneously. Wow, we got a great anchor like David Knight to hand the baton to and Jakari Jackson and the guys coming in tonight to, you know, to host the live election coverage. I mean, we're really doing it, and I'm proud of the patriots that uh, here, and I'm proud of the viewers and listeners and affiliates and sponsors that make it all possible. David Knight. Absolutely, Alex. And, you know, we were talking about this uh, important article about what Newt Gingrich is doing, because we all know what's really behind uh, this attack on Donald Trump. I talked about this on Sunday, and, Alex, when Newt Gingrich came out and uh, started criticizing Donald Trump, calling this uh, inexcusable, saying he had to take this back, and uh, uh, th this was the worst thing that Donald Trump had done. I said on Sunday when I saw those comments, I said, this could be very good news. We've been very worried about Gingrich cozying up to Trump. Were they going to be able to turn him? I mean, this guy is essentially a stalking horse for the establishment, for the globalist elitists. And we were all very concerned when we saw Newt Gingrich start sniffing around Donald Trump. 
And so I'm very, I had absolutely no idea. Exactly. This is another plus certifying that Trump's for real. Yeah. Yeah. I hate you hadn't told me any of this. And and of course you just uh, gave this to Kitten, put out this information. And we remember back four years ago, Sheldon Adelson was all in for Newt Gingrich, uh, pledged hundred million to him, gave him uh, 10 million. And then shortly after that, Newt Gingrich crashed and burned. So that's a really good sign to me. Uh, again, of Trump's being his own man, being authentic on the globalism versus nationalism issue. And the more these guys line up and come after him like this Bilderberger, Lindsey Graham, the better Trump looks. Absolutely, folks. Trump is the real deal. Yeah. Now, he may not be for us. He may be his own guy, but the, the globalists hate him. I mean, he's the real deal. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Tuesday, June 7th, 2014. This is going to be a big night for the primaries. Of course, we're going to be here live with our coverage. And there are primaries, uh, six final primaries from coast to coast. It's going to begin with New Jersey on the East Coast. It will finish up with California on the West Coast. And there are returns from states that will be in between. So every hour we're going to have some polls closing in different states. So it's going to be a long broadcast tonight. It's going to be live. Uh, we'll be taking your calls. We'll be having our correspondents in New Jersey as well as California. We're going to be joining Joe Biggs in California in just a few minutes. Uh, they'll be calling in, telling us uh, what people are telling them as they're coming in and out of the polls, how people feel about this. And, of course, if we look at the results of the polls and this whole superdelegate issue between Bernie and Hillary, his hope, I think, has been all along that he would exceed Hillary in terms of pledged delegates. Or you could call them earned delegates. These would be the delegates that he gets based on votes. Right now, he's not winning that. He's actually uh, losing about 54, 46, something like that. So he's hoping that he can turn that around in California. That would be what he would take to a brokered convention. He would say, look, I've won more than Hillary has in the voting booth. And the only reason that she's beating me is because of the superdelegates. If he could do that, he would have an argument to make there. If he can't do that, if he can't beat her with the pledged delegates, he's not going to really have that argument. And understand that she started out with 15% of what she needed to win the election. So we're going to be talking about that and breaking that down. If you look at the Democrat primaries, every one of these is proportional. And because there's no winner-take-all primaries, when they split 55-45, uh, the delegates are pretty evenly split. And the difference is that in every one of these states, you've got about 10 to 15 percent of the delegates who are superdelegates. And so he has to beat her by 10 or 15 percent just to break even. And then if she beats him by 10 or 15 percent, he loses. <laughs> That's how they rig the game, okay? That's how the game is rigged. And we've seen this play out. State by state. So we're going to watch it play out one final time tonight. We're going to talk about a lot of political news. We're going to go into more detail about the racism charges. And as I mentioned on Sunday and as I repeated yesterday, when I gave the quotes from Cesar Chavez, the uh, union organizer, he said, look, I don't want to hear about La Raza. It is racist. You know, we talk about La Raza and we talk about this judge who is part of the La Raza lawyers. What is their mission? Their mission is stated as empowering Hispanic lawyers, making sure there are more Hispanic lawyers, and giving scholarships to, first one, illegal. Think about that. Giving a scholarship to an illegal so he can go to law school. <laughs> the first thing this guy did was to violate the laws. How's that for ethics, okay? So that's what they're looking for. Everything is about Hispanic this, Hispanic that. The name is The Race. Cesar Chavez said, we're not going to go there. It is racist. It's discrimination. They're, they're actually anti-gringo is what he said. And he says, you start out as anti-gringo. You're going to be anti-negro. And where does it stop? It doesn't stop. But, of course, that's what we have seen from the racialism in our politics. I've got all these quotes from all the people who don't like Trump calling him a racist. All the way out to libertarian candidate, Gary Johnson. Trump is clearly a racist. And all these establishment Republicans, and quite frankly, Gary Johnson is one of the biggest shills for the globalist elitist that you could ever find anywhere in any party. And he's calling Trump a racist. They understand if they want to look at that. They, they can't not know that this guy is a La Raza lawyer. And they can't not know that La Raza is la KKK, la Ku Klux Klan, okay? It's just a Hispanic Ku Klux Klan. Cesar Chavez pointed that out. 
All right. Now, in the short period of time that we've got, I want to talk about what's going on with the EPA. And we've covered this story in the past. Remember that gold mine that they blew up out west? There's an article from the Daily Caller saying, well, after a decades-long battle, this has gone on since the mid-90s, okay? They've been fighting with the EPA. The EPA came in there and said, well, we want to turn your area into a super fund. They said, no, we don't want you to do that. And if you remember when this gold mine blew up and they spewed, this is because of what the EPA did, okay? The, the mine didn't blow up. The EPA went in and caused it to blow up. And we showed you the articles at the time and the op-eds that were written by a retired miner who predicted a month before this was going, this happened, said the EPA is going to come in here. What they're doing, I know as a mining engineer, and they would know as well because they are also involved in this business, they are going to deliberately blow this mine up. And the end result is they want to do this so they can create a super fund out of this area. What I didn't know until I read this article was that they've been fighting to turn this into a super fund for 25 years. So they come in, and it's a self-fulfilling regulatory takeover. They blow the mine up, they pollute the river, the drinking water for three states with toxic minerals and make it a super fund. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. And as I mentioned in the last segment, we're going to have live election coverage tonight. We have reporters across the country who will be... Uh, talking to voters as they leave the polls. And we've got reporters in New Jersey as well as in California. The returns are going to be going throughout the night. It's going to be a long broadcast, probably be about uh, three and a half, four hours long before the uh, polls, between the times the polls close on the east and the west coast. One of our reporters in California is Joe Biggs, and Joe Biggs is joining us right now. Joe. Hey there, David Knight. How's it going? I'm in Long Beach, California. And uh, yesterday, Hillary Clinton actually came out here to the Long Beach City College, and I had a chance to interview quite a few people. It was uh, it was pretty startling to see how many citizens out here in California uh, could care less about Benghazi that wanted a complete and total sweep of guns to take them all away. I mean, it, it was frightening to see and hear some of these people and their answers. I mean, it, it blew my mind. It, it was out of this world. Yeah, and, and of course, she said there's two things that are central to her campaign. One of them is immigration, and she's going to legalize everybody within 100 days. And part of these campaigns, did she have some uh, college students with her there where she was having uh, the dog and pony show? Because she did that this weekend. She had college students there who were bragging about the fact that they were sticking the American taxpayer with these astronomical college bills. I mean, nobody even asks why the college bills are so expensive. We have an article on Infowars.com, illegals openly brag about their scholarships on Twitter, $300,000 scholarship, $282,000 scholarship. I mean, I'd gone through and looked at this small college, Azusa Pacific, where they had a South Korean girl bragging about the fact she was here illegally. I did the math on that. I said, look, that's $177,000 that this uh, lady is sticking us with. And, uh, you know, just over her four-year period. It's absolutely amazing that it would cost this much anymore for a college education. There's no way that you could justify that if you were spending the money or you were borrowing the money. But, of course, if you can stick it to the taxpayer, that's a great deal. And Hillary Clinton is just sitting there nodding about it. And then the other thing is uh, firearms, absolute total gun control. The thing that bothers me, Joe, is that we've got the libertarians, which I never thought I would see the day where the Libertarian Party nominates two anti-gun people like Gary Johnson and William Weld who say the Second Amendment doesn't apply to anything other than hunting guns. And we can have an assault weapon ban. We can have all kinds of control and tracking on ammunition. That's what William Weld did as governor, and he's not backing down on that in 2016. He stands by it. He says, well, none of those guns I wanted to ban were hunting rifles. Well, yeah, what's going on with the Second Amendment is pretty huge in California. They're actually trying to pass a bill that will make it illegal to own any kind of weapon that has a detachable magazine. And Hillary Clinton and her gun-grabbing uh, uh, ways, she actually brought one of her speakers as Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom is known for a lot of these very uh, horrible anti-Second Amendment laws in California. And uh, he paraded her out there. He introduced her and was so happy to have Hillary here, you know, and, and, and they were just kind of laughing about, you know, the whole gun thing. It's pretty ridiculous, you know, because 
Long Beach is a very trendy kind of spot. But then you just go a few miles south and you're in Huntington. That's a very strong conservative area where they want their guns. They want their freedom. They want big uh, big government out of there. They want uh, more states' rights and they want more freedom to the people. So it's, it's California is really weird. You know, it, it differs, you know, miles away just how liberal it can go from conservative. It, it, it's really crazy. It's all over the place, but it's predominantly liberal. And I, I talked about these gun control measures that are coming up previously. I think it's a, a sweeping number of measures. It's something like uh, seven different measures. And, and they're even going to control and track ammunition purchases as part of this. And that's a key thing. Because if you can't buy ammunition, you've got, even if you have a gun, uh, it, it's nothing but a club. And one of the other things they're doing, Joe, is they're even going to put regulations on historical guns uh, going back to the 19th century. They've, that's pretty much unprecedented. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy to see that kind of stuff happen. And Gavin Newsom's the guy that's behind it. And that's why he wants someone like Hillary Clinton. That's why he's going to endorse someone like her, because she's going to allow that to happen. And soon enough, it's not just going to be California. It's going to sweep across the nation. You know, uh, yesterday, Vermin Supreme, he is one of the candidates who was running in the Libertarian Party, was actually out here at the event. And I had a chance to talk to him. And police came over and started harassing him saying that he might be arrested if he was standing out there uh, with his bullhorn walking around. And it's not against any kind of law to have a bullhorn, but the police actually went up to him only and harassed this guy. And we're sitting there, and I started filming it, and I heard the guy, the police officer, say, you need to go to your free speech zone. And I said, what did you say, <laughs> officer? He goes, free speech zone. It's over there. And I said, yeah. well, I'm anti-Hillary. I'm out here protesting. I've got tons of people with me with Hillary for prison T-shirts on. I said, why have you not come up to me? And he, he just kind of completely changed his tone. But he said, you know, if he had to, he would come back and arrest Vermin Supreme for being out there because he was he, he had the spiel where he called it uh, welcome to the Hillary Clinton checkpoint. And he was doing like a TSA thing where he's like, be prepared to go inside the stadium. You must take off your shirt, your blouse, your pants, get a rectal exam to be able to see her hotness, you know, and <laughs> just did this whole thing. Well, you know, Joe, when we were out at the Bundy Ranch, one of the things that got everybody upset about that was that the BLM had the audacity out in the middle of nowhere to put in a cordoned area and say this is a First Amendment area. And had a hand printed, had a uh, machine printed sign and somebody put up a hand printed sign and said the First Amendment is not an area. We've seen these free speech zones at every one of the Republican and Democrat conventions for quite some time now. They put everybody in a cage, literally. They put free speech in a cage and they remove it uh, remote from the convention itself. So nobody is bothered uh, by seeing anyone protesting. That is a clear violation of the Constitution. And it's a good example for the First Amendment of what happens when your rights, your fundamental rights like free speech, are turned into government-granted privileges. They essentially box them in and take them away. And the same thing is being done in California with these regulations. It's what Hillary Clinton wants to do. They put so many conditions uh, and regulations on your rights by infringing on them that they turn those fundamental rights into privileges. And you mentioned uh, uh, Gavin Newsom. There, there's actually a competition going on between two Democrats who want to run for governor. One of them is the current lieutenant governor there. The other is the Speaker of the House. They're both competing to see how far over the top they can go on gun control. And we've seen that kind of competition between Hillary and Bernie. Hillary is, is criticizing Bernie because he doesn't want to allow people to sue gun manufacturers out of business when they haven't done anything wrong. Hillary says, well, anytime there's a shooting, Shooting, you ought to be able to sue the gun manufacturer, even if they, even though you've got the Second Amendment and a specific law that was passed by Congress that said, no, you can't sue people if they don't have any liability, if they didn't do anything wrong. Just like you can't sue Ford if there's an automobile accident because a guy was driving drunk. It's interesting when the guy said free speech zone, I said, isn't our country a free speech zone? Don't we have a First Amendment? And he just kind of chuckled or whatever. You know, but one of the interesting things I want to point out as well, I shot a video yesterday pointing out the trickery behind the Clinton campaign. Now, at the Long Beach City College, they used a they picked a 800 person venue, but they invited thousands of people out there and it left a giant line of people wrapped around the, the street. And I actually went up to one of the officers and I said, hey, sir, I was like, this looks like there's a lot of people out here. And he was kind of an awake cop. He goes. He goes, man, this is all an illusion. He goes, that venue right there holds 800 people. He said, look next door. There's a football stadium that holds 15,000 people. Why do you think she chose this venue <laughs> over the one next door that holds way more people? He says, to give the illusion when the mainstream media films this, yeah. that it looks like tons of people couldn't get into her event, but it was a, a sold-out tiny event. Like, that. that's... Yeah. that's 
too yeah. easy to fill. I mean, we could do that. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. Oh yeah. And that's what she does. That's what she does. You know, CNN, Fox News, all these guys. You know, the report that CNN event or uh, Hillary Clinton event was completely filled, packed to the brim, <laughs> left tons of people waiting outside around the corner. No, they they did that on purpose to make it look that way. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you can also position your cameras to where you only show people and you don't show the empty seats. That's the other thing they like to do as well. Well, uh, Joe, you're going to be giving us some coverage tonight for the uh, live election coverage. Have you been to any of the polling places yet and talked to anybody? Yeah, or is that something that's coming up? I'm going to be at the Bernie Sanders event tonight where he's speaking in Santa Monica. Uh, that's in uh, East or West L.A. out that way. So I'm going to be at the actual event. I have tickets. And I will be out there reporting from there. I have a team of uh, people with me that will be helping out. And I know Lee Ann and Michael Zimmerman will be going somewhere as well tonight. Okay, that's interesting. What do you think, before you go, uh, what do you think about the Bernie people? I mean, what do you think his strategy is in this? Because he clearly doesn't have the votes. And at this point, he's behind Hillary, the even in the pledge delegates that he would get based on the election polling. So even if you took the superdelegates out, he would be losing to Hillary at this point. I mean, what, what do you think his strategy is going forward? I, I, at this point, he knows he's he's lost, but I think he's in it for the movement, so to say. You know, he, he he's he's been out here working hard, and, and you see him. He he packs more people in his events than Hillary does. He has larger venues, just like Trump does, and they both are a popular uh, candidate. Hillary Clinton's just using his trickery, so it's going to be interesting tonight because. Like you said, he's not going to give up. He doesn't think it's over yet. He says, you know, it's, it's crazy that MSNBC and, you know, the Associated Press, all these people would come out and go ahead and say that Hillary has it when no one's even voted here yet. So it'll be interesting to see what happens if they completely call it for her or if there's going to be an uprise. I don't know. I mean, but I know a lot of these Bernie people even told me yesterday at the Hillary Clinton event that they, if they have to, if it gets taken from Bernie, they will vote for Trump. Well, you know, he has uh, flipped a couple of superdelegates. Uh, one just flipped in North Carolina. The problem I see with him trying to sell it is because uh, most of these superdelegates are career politicians, and they're going to stick their finger in the air and see which way the wind is blowing. And unless there is a massive movement in one direction where they all jump ship at the same time, I don't really see a massive movement doing that, especially when she has not the majority of the delegates, but the plurality of the delegates. I think it's going to be a hard case for him. I'm kind of thinking, Joe that he's hanging in there just in case uh, she gets indicted, uh, that may be hope, hoping that they will uh, back off and uh, abandon her at that point, that he can try to make that case uh, there. But I don't think the Democrats will even back away from her, the professional Democrats and many of the supporters. I don't even think they'll back away from her if she's indicted. They still supported uh, Bill Clinton when he was impeached uh, for perjury. And, and that's the thing we need to understand. He was not impeached because he had an affair. He was impeached because he committed perjury. He's a lawyer and a sitting president. He swore on oath at a trial about something and was proven to be a liar. They didn't even come after him on the rape charges, but they showed that he was a perjurer. So I don't think even if they indict Hillary Clinton, I don't think that uh, the, the Democrats are going to abandon her at that point. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you completely. You know, I think he's going to stick it out and we'll see what happens. But, you know, when you go to these events and you actually stand and talk to people who support Hillary Clinton, there's a whole lot of people out there with the same viewpoint. What difference does it make when you bring up the emails, when you bring up Benghazi, <laughs> when you bring up all of, you know, the connections, the, the Clinton cla uh, cash, the, the crime family syndicate that they have, you know, they're like a team, they're like a mobster team. You know, the, the deaths that they're, you know, connected to, it, it's ridiculous. And these people just kind of scoff. They go, huh. You know, whatever. You know, she's she's a woman. I'm ready for a woman. We just had a black president. Now it's time for a woman. Completely not even looking at who she is as a person and what she's going to do to the country. People are just voting because it's a woman. They want a woman. It's time for change. It's time for us to be progressive and move on and ignore the facts. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think he really lost his opportunity. He could have come out not only as being an authentic candidate, which he does come across as, he authentically believes in socialism, which I totally disagree with him on, but he, he is authentic. I mean, he has been consistent with what he believes in over the years. And I think he completely lost his opportunity to take her out because he could have taken the moral high ground. When he said in one of the early debates, uh, I'm sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails, he was done at that point, I think. And uh, we've seen this from other candidates now at this point as well. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. We'll be covering it tonight. And, of course, uh, you're going to be there at a Bernie Sanders rally. We're going to have uh, Joe Biggs in California at the Bernie Sanders rally. We'll also have Leanne McAdoo uh, also reporting from California. And we'll have our reporters uh, in New Jersey as well. Richard Reeves will be there in New Jersey talking to people about what's going on because there's an election all across the country from the East Coast to the West Coast tonight. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you.
All right. Now, as we went to the break at the bottom of the hour, I was talking about what the EPA did in this Colorado town, how they blew up this gold mine so they could turn the place into a super fund. And now the people, after 25 years, 20, 25 years of fighting the EPA, who wanted to take over their town and turn it into a super fund, the EPA came in and through incredible malfeasance that was exposed by engineers ahead of time said they're going to create an a, a environmental catastrophe here and get the super fund that they've been after for a long time they did it they blew up nearly a million pounds of toxic metals lead arsenic other heavy metals polluted this river through three states and the navajo nation and now they've got their super fund now keep that in mind keep that in mind as we look at this washington post story this came out over the weekend via Drudge. I saw it. A major Native American site is being looted. Will Obama risk armed confrontation to save it? This is pure propaganda, folks. This is the Washington Post. Their, their standards have sunk to levels that are totally unprecedented before, even for the establishment media. And when I look at this headline here, okay, the, the Native American site is being looted Will Obama risk armed confrontation with those cowboys to save the Native American lands? That's the, the choice that they're putting out there for us. Poor Obama. You know, he, he's such a victim. He, he just doesn't want to uh, really intrude on anybody. Look, I did a report with Rob Jacobson, and you can find it on the Alex Jones Report, the great American land grab. And we talk about how Obama is going nuts with this with his pen confiscating millions and millions of acres. And, of course, this goes back to the 1906 Antiquities Act. The 1906 Antiquities Act was set up to save Native American sites and some other things. And, of course, they were able to get the Devil's Tower, you know, and, and only four acres to save that entire site. Only four acres was needed to do that. And yet what Obama is doing is he's going in and with a stroke of a pen, confiscating millions of land uh, acres of land and when i say confiscating this is land that the federal government says that it owns and we can have that agreement disagreement as to whether or not they really own it because of the constitution and i'm not going to get into that we've talked about that in the past but the issue is this as the government said okay we own these lands and we're going to manage it for you that's what blm the m and blm stands for is management okay the bureau of land management but they don't want to manage it they want to confiscate the property rights of people who are there. And we're not saying that the Bundys or any of these ranchers own the property. That's never been said. What they own are things like surface grazing rights, water rights, mineral rights, lumber rights. These are property rights every much uh, as, as your property rights, the deed of your home. And if they can take this from them, they can take anything from you even though you're not a rancher, a miner, a logger. If they can steal this from these people, many of them have had this for 150 years. This is property that they've owned, that they've sold. If they take their property rights and say, we're doing it to protect the Indians, and we go in that video, I'm not going to go back and play that video. Take a look at that. You've got Harry Reid showing pictures of some petroglyphs and saying, look, people defaced it. Well, Where's your BLM? Where's your wonderful uh, police state managers out there? The guys with the guns and the military hardware, they can't protect these small areas with these precious petroglyphs? Put cameras around it. Station guards on it. No, it's not about protecting that stuff. And this is fundamentally dishonest from the Washington Post. And that goes to a story that I want to talk about when Jeff Bezos went in and, and talked this last week at the Recode Conference. Uh, to Mossberg, and he was talking about a lot of different things. Everybody focused on his comments and his conflict with Donald Trump because Donald Trump called him out on the Washington Post. He said he bought that for a song, and it is a song to a billionaire. He bought that for a song. It is political leverage, and we're going to talk about how he's leveraging it when we come. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I want to get back to what I was just talking about this propaganda campaign from the Washington Post and where this is ultimately leading. Before I do, real quickly, I just want to let you know about a couple of the products that we have because that's the way we pay for our reporters to be reporting tonight coast to coast or from New Jersey to California. We're going to be covering the primaries live in those areas. We really appreciate your support and we try to offer you products that we can uh, help you with your health, with your personal health, with your family's health. 
and not be beholden to advertisers. So we look at the quality of our products and we offer things to you that we want to use ourselves. Things, my favorite, as I point out many times, is Brain Force. Uh, take a look at the reviews on Brain Force at InfoWarsLife.com. As I've pointed out many times, it really helps me to focus. Uh, that and things like Lung Cleanse are two of my favorite supplements. Many of the things that we take and th that we sell and, and things that I use are things that I can't necessarily feel something right away. These are things that I know from my research are essential to my health. And I do the research. I take a look at it. And so I take these, uh, uh, like say a multivitamin for, uh, multivitamin, for example. When I take a multivitamin, I don't necessarily feel anything. But I know that it's good for me. I can look and see what the ingredients are on that. But when you see some things like brain force, that really does help me to focus my mind. That is available at InfoWarsLife.com. Take a look at the hundreds of five-star reviews. Read it for yourself. And we tell you the ingredients. Research the individual ingredients that we chose to put in this as well. Also, Secret 12, vitamin B12, that is our B12 supplementation. And again, that is in liquid format, which is one of my favorite things. Uh, I love to be able to take things in liquid format so I don't have to swallow a bunch of pills. Read the uh, reviews on B12, Secret 12, our vitamin B12 at our site. Those two are... Uh, are available. Those are two things I would, uh, two of my favorite supplements. Take a look at InfoWarsLife.com, look at the reviews, and get some products. It's a win-win situation for you as well as for us, and we do appreciate your support. Now, as I was talking about this Washington Post story, and I said, this is pure propaganda. This is what they're doing to the, uh, the people out there trying to take their property rights, saying that Obama's going to have to risk an armed confrontation with them. This is essentially what the Washington Post did with Donald Trump. Remember that piece of low-life journalism, some of the worst journalism I've ever seen, where they took the remarks of women out of context. They implied uh, motivations and drew conclusions for these women. Women who refused to be interviewed by them. They took quotes out of context from her book, refused to put in quotes that were uh, favorable to Donald Trump, trying to portray him as a sexual predator. And so now we see the same type of agenda with the Washington Post. And this last week, when Jeff Bezos was uh, at the Recode Conference, he talked about a lot of different issues. I want to talk a little bit about the space issue, but, but first of all, understand what's going on with the Washington Post. Spent $250 million for this, and that's not much money to somebody who's got a lot, as much money as, as Jeff Bezos does. And it gives him a tremendous amount of leverage in that conference. He said, I bought this small paper, which is basically a colloquial paper. Now, who in their right mind would say the Washington Post was a colloquial paper? It's a national paper, just like the New York Times or the L.A. Times or whatever. He says, I'm going to turn it into a global paper. I'm going to do that with my money. With That's my business plan to do that. Well, really, his business plan is to push through favors for himself and regulation. And let me give you an example of this. As I pointed out... In this, and now I'm out of time. Uh, I did this report talking about how we're at the moment here where billionaires are moving into space, just as we have seen in the movie Elysium, for example, as we talked with Hugo de Garris about the Artelite Wars. Essential part of this, it's even more difficult to escape the regulatory reach of the government than it is to escape the gravity of the Earth. That's what happened this last weekend. They're changing the regulations for the private confiscation of space. Take a look at that report, Billionaire Space Race, Prepper Bug Out or Global Domination. Join us tonight for the InfoWars Nightly News live starting at 7 o'clock. It's going to be several hours. Join us then.